6 o'clock having arrived. I call to order the meeting of the Common Council for May 3rd, 2022. Clerk. Thank you, Your Honor. We have 12 present in the meeting um, and 12 voting in civic clerk. Alder Hutchison is joining us remotely. Very good. Thank you, Clerk. We have a quorum and we will proceed. Now please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation led by Alder Morgan. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alder Morgan. Well, I just found out about this yesterday morning. I tried to search out some prayers that would reach government officials and stuff and didn't have much luck. It all centered around our presidents and stuff, and I don't think we need any more controversy like that. So I went back and found a prayer I had in my locker for 40 years as a policeman, and I kind of adjusted it because I think it fits somewhat our job. Uh, I've had so many people thanking me for running and trying to take this job, and you gentlemen have been here for many years before me, and so I'm going to kind of refer it to us, and I think it fits a lot of what we do. Lord, we ask for courage, courage to face and conquer our own fears, courage to take us where others will not go. We ask for strength, strength of body to protect others, strength of spirit to lead others, we ask for dedication, dedication to do our job, to do it well, dedication to our community, to keep it safe. Give us, Lord, concern for all those who trust us and the compassion for those who need us. And please, Lord, through it all, be at our side. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alder Morgan. Appreciate that. And apologies for the last minute heads up on that. <laughs> Appreciate you stepping up to offer the invocation. And for our other new members, um, just so, so you all know, that's kind of how we handle the invocation is by rotating it through council. So Alder Galvin is aware of this. Um, so yes, you're next. So be ready. <clears throat> so thanks again, Alder Morgan. With that, on to approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Motion to approve the minutes from our April 19, 2022 meeting made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Eck. Any changes there? Corrections? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Those minutes are approved. The agenda. Uh, Alder Galvin? Yeah, there is a, there is a, a protest outside. Um, yeah. They're protesting the, the Supreme Court, not us, so. <laughs> Just, just so you know. Yes. <laughs> Motion to approve the agenda made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any changes there? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. You guys have it. And the agenda is approved. Um, report by the mayor. Just a couple of quick comments. One related to the agenda, one not. Um, just wanted to make the point for this this item that is on our, uh, is coming from our PNP meeting on accepting grant funds um, for the public and for some of our new alders just wanted to make the point again that our common council really has the power of the purse in this area and and generally speaking with regard to spending on behalf of the city uh, so you have the power to accept or reject uh, grant funding uh, you will have that regardless of the decision tonight into the future you also don't have the power um, to control what a future council will do. So they will always have the ability to accept or reject um, grant funding and obviously any spending related to, to city business. So um, just wanted to make that point as you head into that debate this evening. Um, secondly, uh, I think we're all aware, if you're not, heads up, Mother's Day is coming on Sunday. So I wanted to wish a happy Mother's Day to my mom, uh, my wife, my sister, all the mothers here. and. Uh, tuning in via Zoom. I think uh, they're all deserve, deserving of some celebration and I hope you all remember to, to do that for yourselves this weekend. Um, so with that, I'll move along to announcements from our council. Alderac. 
Um, so, I, and I mentioned it last time, but I'm, it's a reminder, and then there's an additional, um, that the National Day of Prayer is this Thursday, May 5th, at uh, Riverside Ballroom. It's a luncheon at 11.30. The speaker is Eileen Noyes. She's a former Packers wife, um, sponsored by former Jim Schmidt and Donna Schmidt. And also the Cup of Joy um, Christian Coffee House is having a drop-in prayer all day long that day from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. You know, stop in and pray, and there'll be like a new prayer led each hour. And Jay Zoller of Fox 11 is part of that, leading right. the prayers. Very good. Thank you, Alder. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just wanted to call attention to the month of May uh, as Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, as, as many of us know, there um, most recently have obviously been a number of incidents in our community that have been very tragic. Um, possibly preventable situations uh, through investment in, um, uh, in mental health initiatives. Uh, when you look at whether it, it be things that, like violent crime, homelessness, um, I mean, there's uh, obviously self-infliction. Um, there's a lot of things out there that stem from mental health uh, issues. And so uh, there's not a lot that we do at the city level. Um, it's, it's really a county-based function, state and federal government as well. But I just... I think it's important for us all to, to just recognize um, the millions of Americans that are inflicted by this, uh, countless more worldwide, um, that are things that if we continue to pay attention to, support, and be kind to one another, um, you know, that, that we can hopefully help those individuals who are suffering from, from mental health issues. So thank you, Mayor. Well said. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we've discussed this at council before. I think Alder Burnett has also signed on, but uh, today I put up my sign, no mo may. Uh, I'm kind of a freak about my lawn, but I'm gonna restrain myself for the next uh, rest of this month uh, and resist from mowing. I think uh, if we all do a little bit, it adds up to quite a bit. And uh, the more that we can do to positively impact the world that we live in, the better it'll be. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. In this case, doing a little less, a little which, less. which is sort of nice, right? Appreciate that. Uh, Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I want to piggyback on what Alder Galvin said. In fact, I think, isn't uh, the last day you can sign up for it on May 5th, I believe? Does anybody remember? 7th. 7th? I got my normal <laughs> sign as well, so join the club. All right. That'll be good. Nobody's mowing. Thanks, Alder. Anyone else for announcements? All right. <coughs> Seeing none, on to appointments. Second. Motion has been made to approve um, the appointments to our, we'll take the boards and commissions first, made by Alder Stevens, and that was seconded by Alder Scannell. Any discussion? One question. Yeah, Alder Scannell. Uh, for uh, the Ad Hoc Facilities Committee, uh, Alder Galvin, I, I never thought of you as an ad hoc, is that okay? Thank you, Your Honor. We got a Bucks game to get to Alder Scannell, so. <laughs> All in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And those appointments are, are approved. On to our reappointments. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Eck. Any discussion on the reappointments? Seeing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. On to new appointments. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. Any discussion? Mayor? Yes, Alder Johnson. I uh, just want to disclose that I am not going to abstain from this, but in case anyone were to ask, uh, this is not my employer. This is a totally separate organization. Uh, I do not report to this board or vice versa. So, Very good. Thanks for the note, Alder. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and those appointments are made. One quick uh, housekeeping item I forgot to mention. Um, there were some complaints from online and, and within the chambers about not being able to hear us at our last meeting. So just a reminder to always have the mic close to your mouth when you're, when you're speaking. On to ordinances, second reading for adoption. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Thank you. Motion to suspend the rules. Um, I think we have somebody who would like to speak. So if we motion open the floor. Motion open the floor. Second floor. Motion open the floor has been made by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Sir, and just a reminder, state your name and address and the item you'd like to speak to. My name is Alder Stevens. I'm 
My name is Jim Gretzer, address 3667 Finger Road. That's the city of Green Bay. Uh, I'm gonna, again, you've seen me before, but I'm back. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the Grandview rezoning for industrial. Now I emailed everybody two, actually there were three. There were two plots that I sent you. Did everybody get them? We brought some extra copies along in case somebody didn't get them. So the first one I want to talk about is the aerial view, okay? And before I do that, I just, I just want to clarify something. Last meeting we had, uh, there was a comment that all of the property owners were notified in the last two years about the, the potential rezoning of the industrial area, and we were not notified. Uh, I think the implication that people might have gathered was that we would have been notified and why didn't we talk about it then? I asked why we weren't and the answer was because our property was not inside the zoning area, the rezoning area for industrial. So to make it clear, we had no information about those last two years notifications. Uh, I'm going to ask you to clear your minds of all the things you've heard about this rezoning and this is on the Grandview Finger Road intersection. Just kind of get rid of everything you've heard about and have a clear mind, and pretend that you're going to decide whether or not there's rezoning and where it is. So I ask you to look at the aerial view that I sent you. Uh, the curvy road is Mason Street, the road just north of that, that runs straight is Finger Road. Uh, you'll see the big white area on the lower left corner, that's the big warehouse that's out there. I hope all of you have been out there at some point. A little bit to the right of that, is the new way, uh, new plant that they built for their vitamin business. You will notice lots of open area south of Mason, and I'm going to use Mason and Finger interchangeably because there's not much distance between them. Lots of property below that, or south of that, that's open land right now. I want you to now look at the other one that I sent you, which is the Grandview Place Redevelopment this yellow guy, you might have it black and white. And again, to get your orientation, the, ver the bottom of the map has Finger Road. Okay, and there's Grandview going north and south. So you can see this was approved by the city council, and you'll notice that this is all residential with some commercial. So north of Finger Road is all kinds of residential, all right? To my knowledge, there's no industrial zoning north of Finger Road. None. I was corrected that said, well, up at Highway 54, well, I'm not going to the North Pole. I'm talking about where the people are living or potentially <laughs> live. So my question to you is, if you had to decide, would you create an island of industrial zoning north of Finger Road, when in fact, south of fin Finger Road in Mason, is where the logical place is. If you were to extend the zoning from industrial where it currently exists and go east, you'd still be south of Finger Road. So why create this island of industrial zoning north of Finger Road when in fact it looks logical to put it to the south? If you answer yes, I would put zoning industrial there. I ask you why? What logic is there? And uh, you might say that it's already been done and the project's been moving forward even though the zoning hasn't been changed and I say well we got the cart before the horse again. Uh, sir just want to let you know your three minutes have expired so if you just wrap it up for us here and okay then you can entertain wrap it up. questions. Okay quickly when I was working we always asked for options I don't know if any options have been given to you about where the things might be different and I ask, ask you to have courage, as our invocation said, and vote no, and have the courage to vote no on all future things as well. Last week's invocation you know, said that you should do the right thing. Abraham Lincoln said, we have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. He didn't say of the mayor, by the council, and for the money. Please don't make decisions based on money alone. Thank you, sir. Any questions for our guest? From council? I don't know if you can, but the land Just one second. 
Alder Grant, go ahead. Um, the land that you're proposing to keep it, is that land available? You, you said east of Finger Road, where you suggested putting it instead? South, south of Finger Road is open land. Is that available? Well, if somebody makes an offer to property owners, it's available. There is a for sale sign across okay. the street from uh, Nature's Way. I don't know how big that parcel is. But we also know that at the last meeting and in the, the meeting where they put the big development in, property owners south of Finger Road were encouraging to have those developments uh, made for zoning for the industrial because they have property on the south side of Finger Road. And I can only guess they want the development so they can sell their property. And anybody who wants to buy somebody else's property has the right to do that. Any other questions? Seeing none, I entertain a motion to close the floor. Thank you, sir. Clark. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it, the floor is closed. Um, we are still on ordinances, second reading for adoption. For yeah, Alder Scannell. So, uh, it's we could hear from staff on why we went the direction we went, what, how this came about. That might be helpful for some elders. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Director Stick Schulte. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I said, I think, because we kind of briefly covered in some of the those materials, um, this is this area is considered, is, is actually considered an expansion of the business park that is in this area. It is not immediately adjacent to, however, at some point in the future, uh, certainly could see these two areas being contiguous in the future. Um, in terms of the actual location, certainly the city does own this property uh, and has for quite some time. Uh, it is one of the more developable properties in this immediate area. There are uh, issues such as wetlands, uh, extension of utilities, and other things that, that do make this a competitive site at the current time. Um, I think this area, is, while it's currently about a 25-acre uh, area, it is certainly, I think, the entire uh, industrial park area is about 375 acres. That has been identified in various plan documents to date. So uh, we certainly agree that, that going, I think, to the east and to the south definitely has uh, future potential for this area. Uh, however, in terms of extending utilities and so forth, this would kind of be a key anchor piece to assist in kind of extending utilities to the remainder of that area. Thank you, Director. Alder? Just one follow up. And this is a unique uh, zoning. We, it will be, how shall we say, beautified. It will take into account that uh, there are uh, housing in the area. Uh, yes, Alder. We actually intentionally, uh, staff did recommend going through with a planned unit development specifically for this area and to have the opportunity to, uh, to further enhance the buffer areas uh, as well as the landscaping requirements required uh, with the idea that there could be uh, other uses in proximity to this area. Any other comments or questions? Any others from our council? Alder Eck? Um, yes, I, I just have a question he had mentioned that um, had started. Is that the case? Did it start? And how far along, if it has? Uh, right now, we, we do have a, a specific company that is, it is making a request and is interested in purchasing the property. Uh, that agreement actually was going to be listed under the EDA report this evening. However, there's still some work to be done on that, so we're going to be request staff is actually asking to have that move to the May 17th council meeting. So there's some additional information that still needs to be resolved on that. So there is no, uh, there, you know, there has been discussions with this particular company who's interested in this, but it is certainly not a done deal. The city is still the owner of the property at this point. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Alder. Anything else? Okay, we're still just on ordinance, a second reading for adoption. Mm -hmm. um, motion so to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules and take up these ordinances with one uh, roll call vote has been made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion on that motion? Can we pull that uh, number three and vote on it separately? Yes. Motion to suspend the rules for items one and two. Motion has been made to suspend the rules for items one and two by Alder Scannell, Second. seconded by Alder Galvin. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> the ayes have it. The rules are suspended for those two items. Motion to adopt item three. Uh, we still need to adopt that items one and two. Oh, we just suspended them. Yes, motion to adopt. 
Second. Motion has been made to adopt items one and two by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? If not, we will use the board. Thank you, Alder. You may vote. Ordinances are adopted unanimously, 12-0. We are now on to J3. Motion to adopt made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion? Alder Eck? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if we can refer it back to committee for further review. Is that a motion? A motion to refer it back to committee for review. Is that a good motion? I mean, is it that's what I'm looking for yes uh, so I mean this is an ordinance um, so I just asked the city attorney to weigh in on on that yeah. so this ordinance was already approved at the committee level um, and it was ad or is advanced to second reading so it can be held it can't essentially be referred but it would be referring back to plan commission um, and then if it comes back, it would come back at second reading since it already passed at first. Okay, so just so, so for people who are paying attention online, in person, and for our new council members, our ordinances need to be adopted with two readings. And so what our city attorney is saying, it's, it's already gotten over that first hurdle. So if it goes back to plan commission, it still has received that first reading. It just would need the second reading to be adopted. Um, but your motion would be to refer back to plan commission? Yes. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Seconded by Alder Campbell. Further discussion on, on that referral? Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, certainly referral is an appropriate motion. Um, you know, but typically when you're referring something, you're looking for additional work to be done, something to be redone. And I, I, I perhaps wonder if, uh, if Alder Eck would maybe speak to what it, I mean, what it is that we would be looking to modify or edit within this ordinance uh, because if it's just a matter of slowing it down or or maybe not supporting it then I think we just got to take an up or down vote on it um, but but again I if, if it would be appropriate mayor if Alder Eck could perhaps speak to uh, if there's something specific she would like to see modified within this Alder Eck not necessarily um, I guess what my concern is is I in hearing um, from the gentleman here that it doesn't sound like there was a lot of communication with all of the people that it affected and I know we had the he mentioned last time the zoom and all these other complications so that's I guess what I'm looking at is giving that other opportunity um, now that there's the people can meet in person and and maybe get the word out to more people I guess that's what I'm looking for okay thanks Alder. Alder Johnson. Uh, uh, Director Sexualty um, could you speak a little bit about that, that notification? Uh, typically, I guess, what is required by law? And then what is customary in terms of what we do? And then what, what did we do in, in this scenario? Yeah, I believe, uh, and Attorney Bugger, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's a 400-foot uh, requirement generally around uh, any sort of any affected parcels immediately adjacent to the, the parcels being rezoned. Um, that certainly was was absolutely met. Um, in, in the, the previous uh, planning documents, we referenced the larger plant, uh, industrial park area. Uh, and, you know, those are the 375 acres. Actually, the owners of all of those parcels were also notified of this, p this pending change. Uh, and, and what does law require? 400 feet. Okay, so so basically we met the standard. Yep. Okay, uh, and then as as far as um, the other, uh, I guess agreement that that is kind of tied to this, which is not uncommon, right? A lot of times we we take up issues here that are kind of, you know, some are tied to rezoning and then the development agreements and other issues. Could you speak a little bit to how this might impact that? Well, absolutely. Uh, essentially, you know, to be to be clear, while they are certainly related to the same area. Um, the rezoning itself does not 
necessarily automatically mean a project will go there right. that still needs to be reviewed uh, this is simply the passing the zoning and the rules for that specific property uh, so once that is in place there would still need to be a site plan and uh, and staff will review to ensure the compliance with the ordinance so that has not been been done at this point um, and essentially uh, the agreement itself is obviously related primarily to the the purchase of the property from the city as well as as any any assistance that the city may be doing and any infrastructure and other obligations we may have in terms of what the project would be uh, that has not been finalized so that is why tonight we're asking uh, we'll be asking later on to have that referred to the May 17th meeting uh, staff was not comfortable with some of the provisions that are being discussed so wish to have some additional time to work on those okay and, and I appreciate that explanation about the distinction between the two um, and, and because I, th I do think that's an important point uh, and then as far as this uh, rezoning recommendation that has um, been through plan commission it's been through a first reading already through City Council um, I mean we're pretty far into this process uh, does this does this recommendation is it in alignment with the city's comprehensive plan uh, yes in my opinion it would be yes okay uh, so so I think I mean, to me, it seems like we're, we're at the point now where we have to make a decision, and I, I would be against referral for that reason. Um, and, and, and I think without, you know, any substantive changes other than uh, expanding, perhaps, it sounds like maybe the scope of notification. Uh, I mean, we, we have issues that obviously come before us all the time where, where folks wish we had done a wider swath of that, and I think that there certainly is some merit in having conversation we have over the years, in fact. Do we, do we change what that scope is? And sometimes it seems like there's no limit uh, to, to how far that notification could go but uh, I'm ready to take an up or down vote on this tonight um, it, it it seems like an appropriate uh, use for that site it's it fits within the comprehensive plan and so uh, without anything more specific other than a, a broader notification I just I'm not sure that I see the the merit in, in holding this up so there any additional comments on the motion to refer back to Plan Commission seeing none uh, Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. I would have to agree also with uh, Alder Johnson. I'm looking at a, I was just looking at a map here of adjacent properties. Um, and from what it's telling me on the legend of the map here, it's 500 feet per whatever segment. Uh, I don't see any other residential homes or anything within that area. Um, so, I mean, we could be notifying subdivisions a mile away. Uh, but if we're going to be doing that with every time we're going to be trying to develop land out especially in the outer reaches of the east side uh, it's going to be quite a bit of notification and and obviously this was notified it was talked about at the last council meeting and yet no one else has shown up uh, to express any concerns or interest either way in this matter so I would not be in favor of referral either thank okay. you thank you Alder any other comments Alder Stoyer <clears throat> thank you your honor <clears throat> You know, when you look at the city of Green Bay, <clears throat> there's really very few areas that we can grow. And I, uh, you know, what Alder Johnson said about, look, you know, having the comprehensive plan in place, I think is very important. You know, I think in, in, a, in a perfect world, we'd like to take care of everybody on something like this, but I think we have to look at the greater good of the city. And right now, the only areas we can really grow are to the east side, and there's land available. You know, it's gone through the process, so I, I, I vote for an up or down on, on that as well. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any final comments? Alder Eck. Um, a motion to withdraw my request for referral. Okay. Uh, Alder Eck has, has withdrawn her motion. So the motion on the table uh, would be approval, which has been made, I think, by Alder Scannell. Yeah. Um, City Attorney Bungert. Yes, I actually kind of looked in, into this um, after one of our meetings where we had a lot of motions and withdrawals. Um, Robert's Rules actually requires when a motion has been made and seconded um, and to withdraw that motion, you have to make a motion to withdraw that motion, it has to be seconded, and it has to be voted on, and then that motion is withdrawn. Okay. I think the motion was seconded by Alder Campbell already. Um, so all in no, to withdraw. Oh, it's, okay. Yeah. My mistake. Okay. So, who made the motion to withdraw? Alder Eck, and it was seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 
And that motion has been withdrawn. A uh, motion to approve is on the table. And we will use the board on that. Adopt? Yeah. Approve. Adopt the ordinance, yeah. Yeah. Give me a moment. Thank you, Alders. You may vote. Grant. Thank you. And Clark PC. Clark PC. Um, so yep, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. There it is. And so that has been adopted unanimously. On to report of the INS committee. And take them off. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. Any items uh, to be held to be discussed separately here? Any items? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report of the Improvement and Services Committee from April 27, 2022 has been approved. On to the report of Protection and Policy Committee. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any items here to be handled separately? Fifteen, twenty-two. Any others? <coughs> Items fifteen, twenty-one, and twenty-two will be handled separately. Hearing no others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved, the exception of items 15, 21, and 22. Your wishes on item 15. To refer back. Motion to refer. That right away? Sure. Yep. Approval. Motion to refer this item back to committee uh, has been made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Alder Scannell, you pulled this item. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yes, I was informed by uh, Mr. Kane, uh, who's one of the owners of this establishment. He had hoped to speak to the council. Uh, he's putting together a packet together, and uh, he'd like to, uh, uh, but he cannot be here tonight. So he asked if I would hold this for him. Uh, this is in my district. Also, I know uh, there are other parties who are interested in this who would also like to present, so we need to hold it. Okay, hold it or refer back. I. I think we could just hold it because if we refer it back, we're going to end up doing the same show at council. So okay. that might as well go right there. So okay. Hold. So you, you made a motion to refer. However. Did I? I thought I said hold. Did I say? Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> <laughs> would you like to withdraw your motion? I would like to withdraw my motion. <laughs> okay. All this nice that. makes a motion to uh, to withdraw his motion. That was seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor of signify by saying aye. God. Aye. Aye. Nay. The ayes have it, and that motion has been withdrawn. Alder Scannell? I'd like to make a motion to hold. Second. All right. Alder Scannell makes a motion to hold this item until our next council meeting. That was seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That item has been held. On to item 21. Your wishes? Uh, motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Stoyer. Second. Seconded by Alder Scannell. The item was pulled by Alder Eck. You have the floor. Well, I have somebody here that wants to speak on it. Motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor or, made well, by you said it. I'm saying Alder it. Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Eck. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Hmm? Like Alder Scannell. Uh, I oppose the motion. I don't know why we need to spend any more time on a ghost issue. There are no modems. There's nothing to do here. Anyone who wants to open the floor, I'd like to know where you'd like to go with this item. What are we going to do with this item? The only thing to do is receive and place on file. There are no modems. There's nothing to discuss. Um, for me, opening the floor is to do city business. I don't know what we can do here other than receive and place on file. So I do not support the motion. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. <clears throat> Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Obviously, I'm very much in favor of opening the floor. Too much in the past couple of years, we don't open the floor. When people take time out of their lives to come here, part of our job is to listen to them. So we should open the floor for anybody who wants to speak to this body. Thank you. Thanks, Holder. Any other comments? 
Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of opening the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Nay. The ayes have it, the floor is open. And please just approach the podium, state your name and address, and begin. Teeny Slick Heffern Circle, Green Bay. Um, I had attended the um, public or policy and protection committee meeting um, when the, where this item was discussed. I thought it was very unclear about the discussion with the modems. I know um, Clerk Jeffries had mentioned that the modem was found, there was a modem at some point in one of the DS200 machines. It had been removed a couple of years earlier. No more information other than that. My question would be, it was that where was that particular machine that had a modem in it used during the 2020 elections? Um, I know there was some DS200s at Central Count during some of those elections. So I think that it was very vague and not very transparent. Um, the emails that were put forward to were very worded in a way that you really, it was unclear when the modems were removed um, and where they were used. There wasn't, nothing was uh, ever discussed about that. So I think it's important to know for the public, for transparency with all that's happened with 2020, that we know more details about the machine with the modem. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Any questions for our guests? Oh. Seeing none. Motion to close the floor. Thank you, ma'am. Motion to close the floor made by Elder Johnson, seconded by Elder Stevens. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Aye. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Um, Alder Act. I just wondered if there was an answer to the question that uh, Ms. Razor brought up. Okay. And that specific question would be? where the modems were used in the 2020 election. Okay, thank you, Alder Act. For Clerk Jeffries. I had a question. Just one second, for Clerk Jeffries. Uh, certainly, so um, first of all, I just wanna go back a little bit because the question that was asked of me were, do our machines currently have modems? And the answer, of course, is no. But let me just go back a little bit so I can be a little bit more explanatory. So in, um, February 2022, I received a list from our tabulator vendor, ESNS, with all the serial numbers. On that list, uh, one particular machine ending in 0175 was listed as having a modem. Um, on 3-10-2022, the city and county clerk staff gathered in the secure location where our um, tabulators are stored to examine each machine that was that were stored actually at that location to see if any of the DS200s had modems. Uh, on 3-18-22, we had a service call. Uh, that, at that time, the technician who's been working with the city for quite some time um, also examined the 0175 machine, which, as I said, was identified by ESNS last year as having had a modem that, in fact, did not have a modem. Um, on 318, I, respect, I inspected the remaining four machines that were here at City Hall. None had modems. To reiterate, that the DS450, that design does not have modems in it. It never did. Um, so the DS200, again, this question wasn't asked of me originally, So, but I did go back into the documents to find out where that 075 machine was used in 2020. Again, um, Central Count had one DS450 in 2020 and four, five backup DS200s. The 0175 machine was used at Ward 25 in 2020. The 0175 machine, I thought that machine was um, housed here at City Hall for the April election. In fact, we did use it. Um, again, that machine was examined in March to have no modem, and then it was deployed to Ward 41 for the April 2022 election. So um, also I did make, yeah, I just corrected myself that I thought it wasn't used in April, but it was. And as I said, that was deployed to Ward 41, but only after Dan DeTample had actually examined it to discover that there was no modem in it. So to conclude, or rather to reiterate, none of our machines have modems. The DS450s never did. That's not the design. Thank you, clerk. Any additional questions, Alder Eck? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. I think Alder Morgan. I guess I would, uh, you answered part of it when you gave me the date for the emails that told you that 
the machine, in fact, number 0175, serial number, didn't have it. Was that machine used in the primary election at all? For February primary? Yes. Um, Before, you said it was removed when it was inspected yeah, on 318. That I, I, let's see. If you recall, the primary had only 19 wards participating. Correct. Just give me a moment. So the record that I have from um, the primary was that that machine was not used, but I need the inspector's statement, which I don't have in front of me. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin? I apologize, Clerk Jeffries. I, I got a little confused listening to your explanation. The m tabulator with the modem was not used in February, or it was? I. So February of 2022, I have a list here. I don't have the inspector statement. The inspector statement is a legal document. Okay. So it seems that it wasn't used in February 2022. Okay. It was examined in mid-March of 2022 to have no modem, and then it was deployed in April for um, Ward 41. Okay. At one time, it did have a modem, or we're told it had a modem. ES and S had thought that it did have... So when we got the list from them, right. they had identified as 0175 as having had a modem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know when the city took ownership of that machine? So the city, the agree agreement we have with the county is that they're actually the county's machines. Uh-oh. And so um, when I had inquired with the county clerk's office, who is wonderfully cooperative and very um, helpful, and very knowledgeable. Um, it was their understanding that none of the DS200s had modems in them. So that was the original response from the county clerk's office. But we decided to actually give closer inspection to all of the machines to actually look to see if there was actually, if there were any modems in them. And you can see where the modem would be sure. inside the machine. By the way, you'd actually have to get really in the machine in order to see that. That's not available to anyone. Even a chief inspector wouldn't have the ability to look at that. Um, so I don't know when the machine, when the modem was removed. I couldn't tell you. Um, the county, like I said, they had thought that there was never a modem in the DS, in that 0175 DS200, although ES&S did think that it was. Okay. So the county, that's their machine? Yes. So. At any election, could that machine end up in Green Bay or De Pere so or those, Howard Swamico? Those serial numbers are assigned to us. Oh, so they are yes. ours? Yes. Okay. But we don't have any documentation. Do we have documentation showing when we took possession, when it was assigned to us, and how often it's been used? I, I don't expect you to have that right now. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I would have to ask the county that question. I mean, I know that I can tell you how old that machine is, but... It, how long it's been in our use, I, the county would have to, yeah, that's a 2013 machine. 2013, okay. And ES and S, they're not the manufacturers? Yes, they are. They are. So they would have, hopefully, records. I mean, because what I'm hearing is they, they think there was, but they don't have actual documentation showing there was. With who? The uh, county ES, or ES, ES and S? ES and S believed that that machine had a modem in it. Okay. That was, that, that was according to their records. Okay. Now, granted, every technician who comes and works with both the DS450s and the DS200s, these are people who are knowledgeable with es and s and they fix machines all the time. They replace parts, they take parts out. So, you know, it's quite possible that the county had asked es and s to their technician to remove the modem. I'm not sure. That would be a deeper dive with the county. I'm not sure what records they have. Okay, so anyone interested in that information would, would be better served to go to the county and, and see what records they have that they've been keeping. Potentially. If you really wanted to know, I mean, I can tell you, as a 318.22, there was no motive right. in 0175. All right, and that's, that's, that's okay, perfectly clear. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Alder. Alder Campbell? He kind of covered most of that, but I would think a machine like that of that kind of caliber, 
accounting weights and scales of any kind of thing like that should have a birth certificate, let alone when the first time it was put into service, let alone right up to the day it was used last. I don't understand why something so important doesn't have a record like literally, I don't care how many pages it is, that should have every single detail of every single person of every single date and the cost of how much it costs to fix and maintain that machine and when it got moved or anything for that matter. So I don't see why there's so much question in this, this one machine, let alone how long it's been getting moved around. I would ask that we uh, try to see a little better records on on this machine or on all the machines for that matter. So that's what I'm looking for. Thanks, Alder. Alder Weary? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question would be either to the chair of the committee or to Clerk Jeffries. Is there, um, is there a written report or was there an email? And my apologies if I missed it, but I, I'm not seeing an attachment and I don't remember seeing an email. So there is an attachment in your packet. There was an attachment in the P and P packet that was confidential. The attachment with the emails, which um, per Alder Morgan's request to have the date of the second email, so that attachment is public. There's another attachment that's just for counsel. All right, apologies. It looks like I'm looking at the wrong the wrong version of the web here, so I did not see the the. Uh, is there anything that we couldn't just uh, open to the public? On well, that? the attachment one attachment is public. The okay. attachment with the emails are public, is but public. the other portion? It is not. And why, why is that? Because it is a picture of inside the machine. And that's the only thing that's in it? Correct. Okay. But is there a written report? You know, like, like you had gone through all the model numbers and the dates and... No, it was an oral report with okay. those two emails as so you my could, basis. So you could put together a written report fairly easily? It, that depends on the parameters of the report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'd make a motion to refer this back to committee for a written report. Uh, I think I have the floor. But, yep. I mean, you can at least speak later. That's my motion to refer this back to committee for a written report for a, a report on all the election machines from January 1st, 2020 forward. Okay. okay. Motion has been made to refer this item back to committee um, to include the information. That yeah, I, I think we need a little more transparency on this. I mean, a written a, a verbal report's great, but. I think we need something written that uh, can be shared and, and, and gone over. If we're really going to be transparent and open and honest about it, we need to do as much as possible on it. Thanks. Okay, that motion has been made and seconded by um, Alder Brunette. Discussion on that motion? Has it been seconded? Yes, seconded by Brunette. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, discussion. Yes. Alder Scannell? I oppose the motion. I don't know why this is an agenda item to begin with. I don't know why we're playing around with this. Uh, if there were modems, so what? What is the concern here? I don't get it. If And there are no modems. So what are we doing here? We're talking about ghosts. How much time have we spent here talking about ghosts? Something that doesn't exist. What's next? We're going to talk about the world is flat. We didn't land on the moon. Where are we going to go? People who are pushing this, I, what do you want us to do with this agenda item? What are we doing with this agenda item? What's the, what, what's the purpose? I don't get it. If there's something wrong with the machine, something people feel there's something not right, I don't think the council here is it's not our business for that. That's the WEC. That's the Attorney General. If you think something illegal is going on or something, I mean, I, I don't understand what's going on here. As far as I'm concerned, this never should have been an agenda item, and we certainly shouldn't be spending all this time on it. For what purpose? I'd like to know where we're going with this item. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Eck? Just remember our reminder to press your buttons, Alders. Okay, um, yes, and uh, you said there wasn't a modem, but there was. There may be not now, but there was, from what my understanding is, and basically the whole reason is, is for transparency. Um, to, to just have that written report that would be available for the public to be able to see and feel better about having the transparency. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Brunette? Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor. My my request to speak button is not there. It's hidden, so I, I can't push it. So 
I'll try to figure something out. Um, I, I obviously support the motion. I made the second. The, the, the reason is if you take a real cynical view, and I don't actually take a cynical view, but if you did, you could make the assumption or the argument that machines connected to modems, if there is some um, unethical behavior, could transmit data to an outside source or party to tally votes for an election. So there are reasons why we should have dumb um, counters and dumb uh, machines so that that removes all possibility of such activity. Not saying that happened here, but there are some people throughout the country that think that's a possibility. And so a written report affirming that, there's no harm in that at all. It's not, it shouldn't be considered offensive to even discuss it. That's why we're here. We're trying to restore public trust. And if, if we do a very basic request like that, I see no harm. I do have a question and it relates to the uh, motion, Mayor, uh, to Clerk Jeffries. Um, on page 13 and 14 of the special counsel um, second interim report, uh, it's just two paragraphs. It said, ESS machines were equally problematic. The central problem is that several of the machines are made with a 4G wireless modem installed, enabling them to connect to the internet through a Wi-Fi hotspot. One municipality under investigation in Wisconsin by the OSC admitted that these machines had these modems and were connected to the internet on election night. The reason given was to, quote, transmit data, unquote, about votes to the county clerks. The OSG learned that all machines in Green Bay were ESS machines and were connected to a secret hidden Wi-Fi access point at the Grand Hyatt Hotel, which was the location used by the city of Green Bay on the day of the 2020 presidential election. The OSC discovered the Wi-Fi machines and ballots were controlled by a single individual who was not a government employee, but an agent of a special interest group operating in Wisconsin. Now, clerk, you were not the clerk at that time of the 2020 November election, but could you or the city attorney comment on that? Is, is the Office of Special Counsel incorrect in stating that publicly? a lot oh, of information is my, my con yeah. I'm not sure how to digest that one because that was a lot of information um, to be honest I don't think it's appropriate for me to be publicly stating one way or the other because we're still under litigation with respect to the office of special counsel's writs against um, the mayor and the city um, so I, I don't really think that I can actually speak to that um, it, uh, on, in a public forum until that litigation is 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 over. Um, attorney, for the sake of the city council, yes. were were the machines at Central Connect account connected to a internet connection through a modem in the machines? So, uh, Alder Burnett, for 2020, we used a DS450. The DS450 design never contained a modem. At that time, the machine that ESNS believed had a modem, 0175, was deployed to Ward 25. The other machines that were used at Central Count, none of which had modems. So that is the information that I have from the records that um, have been maintained at the clerk's office. Again, you, you were not clerk, so I respect the position you're in. Yes, but these are records that are maintained by the clerk's office. Okay, so uh, I, this is why the motion is valid, because we can refer this back to the clerk's office, everything she just stated, and perhaps with the attorney's guidance, you could draft something in response to uh, 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 the OSC's second interim report, because there seems to be some public document released by his office that refutes some of the things were being told. So uh, anyways, I, I don't want to be a dead horse. I think that the, the, the motion is valid. We need something in writing that can be released to the public to remove all doubt. That's all. Thank you. Your Honor. Uh, yes. Coach if Jeffries. I may. Um, I don't understand the scope of this report. So 
I, I would ask Alder Weary to be more specific about what is the scope of the report. Is there some business that we need to be abreast of? Alder Weary, I'm just asking the city attorney if this information is included in the report that Attorney Chavez already provided. I, I don't recall ever gaveling you down within recent memory, but I appreciate your guidance. Your Honor, if, if I may Go ahead. have a direction from Alder Weary. Um, unfortunately, Alder Burnett brings in two paragraphs from the Office of Special Counsel, which has a completely different scope, I believe, than what Alder Weary would like. So I need direction about what should be in this report. If, Your Honor, if I could, point of order. Alder Galvin. If, if I understood this, this item, it was about a report that was given by Clerk Jeffries at PMP. And if I understood Weary, uh, Alder Weary, he wanted a written version of that report. Now, Alder Burnett is throwing in a caveat that he wants more than was presented at PMP. And I, I think that would be a separate item for a future PMP or a separate item. I don't think it, it's not being addressed here. It wasn't addressed here tonight. I, I don't know how we could include that in. Certainly, if he wants to make it an item for a future PMP and then get it to council or whatever, I'm, I certainly would entertain that. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. I think that point is well made. Uh, we've got a few folks in the queue. Alder Grant. Just the end. I could have an answer from Alder Weary. Sure. So, Clerk, go ahead. Yeah, I think he understands. Alder Weary, if you, if you will. Let's go. Yeah, basically your report, but in written form. And I just put as a date January 1st, 2020, just as a starting point. You know, you don't have to go back to 2019, 2018. We're just looking. That's the starting point, those elections after that, and what machines we used. Okay. It, it, it's, it's been discussed and, you know, a lot of dates and model numbers and things thrown around, but it just gives a starting point. That's the only reason I use that date. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Grant. I just wanted to state kind of in response to... I'll just handle that. I do agree in this motion because a lot of people, we are getting a lot of questions. And one thing that was the most disheartening when I was campaigning was people's loss. They lost faith in the voting. So to have something just physical for people to look at, I don't see any harm in that. And again, transparency is what a lot of people are asking for. So thank you. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'm going to support the motion as well, but I want to explain why. it. it to be clear, I, I don't think there's, and I've said this multiple times, I do not believe there's anything nefarious going on here in the city of Green Bay. I think it's a real tragedy, but I think, as, as I've said along the way, I think the, the thing that we're losing is the public relations battle. And, and I think referring this will provide that level of clarity, I think, that some folks are seeking, that, that hopefully will, will help put this particular issue to rest and if if we don't refer it and we don't do that report my hunch would be Alder Weary or someone else will simply just submit a communication to require it and then it's going to be taken up all over again anyway so just refer it it's the most expedient way to dis to to kind of uh, dispense of this item long term um, you know I mean for I mean holy cow these these machines were not, are not even owned by the city of Green Bay so, so I, I think this notion, right, that, that modems are somehow contributing to, uh, to an election conspiracy just doesn't make any sense to me. But if getting the report in writing helps us control the PR message, I'm all for it. Let's just do that. And there's one request that, that I would make of every alder sitting here today. If there is something related to this topic for which you want an answer, Please seek it with Clerk Jeffries, and please just request her to put it in the report. So that way we're not sitting here two weeks from now, four weeks from now, eight weeks from now, continuing to talk about modems in, in, in voting machines. I think there's a way for us to dispense of this, to create the transparency people are looking for, uh, and, and to move on. So thank you, Mayor. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my original question I was going to ask quite a bit before of Clerk Jeffries is the machines that are assigned to us, county stores them in between usage? No, we, we the, store. City. the city stores them. city stores them. Who does the maintenance on them? ES&S does the maintenance on them. Who orders that maintenance? I do. Okay. 
and you have documentation of that maintenance, or the, the clerk's office has documentation of that maintenance, or at least when it was asked for and when it was done. And ENS, ES and S may actually have documentation of which machines they serviced and what they did to them. I'm demurring because, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, because I've been the clerk since January 2021. Right. So um, I, I would have to actually seek those records from ES and S. Okay. Does the county keep any records at all about machines at all? I'm not sure what records they keep. Okay. I mean, they keep a lot of their excellent record retainers, but precisely which records they have, I don't know. All right. And Alder Burnett, you, you may be uh, shocked, but I actually agree with you. I think documentation in a written form is, is the best way to go with anything that we do uh, moving forward. It's something that can be referred to a year, 10 years, 100 years later, uh, and, and that documentation is, is necessary. Um, but in that report, if you could just document uh, Clerk Jeffries, you know, what machines, if you can find out what machines were serviced, when and by whom, and, and what was done to them, again, for transparency's sake, um, you know, the, the, the people that want to believe in conspiracies, I, I don't think that's going to stop it. But uh, for everyone else that's looking for uh, a rebuilding confidence in our voting uh, system, I, I think this will go a long way. Thank you. Alder, Alder Scannell. Yeah, I still oppose it for this reason. Uh, that it should never have been an item. And I, I don't support this. You know, we say people, people lost faith. Who are these people? I just knocked hundreds of doors asking people, how's your neighborhood, how's, how are things going downtown? I had maybe five people talk to me about the election. And half of them are concerned about the elections going forward with the new laws that their vote ain't going to count. Two, three people brought up concerns about the past elections. That's nobody, statistically. We're spending a lot of government money, effort, time here, for what? Conspiracy theorists. That's who's pushing this. Everyone here says, no, there's nothing wrong with the election, except for the people who want this information. Why are we catering to that? I will not cater to that. This item, if there is something wrong, we are not the body be taking this up. There are other authorities who people should be going to if they have suspicions. Fine, you got suspicions? Fine, I got no problem with that. Take them where they should go, not here. This is a waste of government tax dollars. This is a waste of city time, staff time. I don't support that. No way. Thank you. So Alder, Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I was going to ask Alder Johnson, you're saying that if other Alders have questions or uh, comments to give the clerk Jeffries, is there a time frame that you have on something like that? Just as soon as possible. Before it goes to the next committee meeting. All right. Well, um, as far as uh, a report, written report, I concur with uh, Alder Johnson and Alder uh, Galvin on this as well. Uh, some time ago when we had a, the previous clerk, I had asked for a, a written report, um, and it was a, a verbal half-hour diatribe. That was the report. I don't remember much about it. I think it's very important that we have something in writing. Just for transparency's sake, I think it's very important. So. I will support that. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Any final comments on this motion to refer <clears throat> back to committee? Alder Campbell? I'm going to refer back to a few people here. Uh, when uh, Alder Johnson asked why or if and how that we have to take it up between the council, well, I think I'm going to side with Jen here, being a new council member along with the other four. Just a reminder to refer to Alders by their last name. Okay, sorry, with respect. Um, and to Alder Scannell here's request too about why. Um, we have five new Alders here and our tax paying constituents want answers. That's who votes. That's why we need to bring it to council. 
That's why we need Mr. Johnson, uh, Alder Johnson. Uh, that's why we do need to bring it here because we're trying to st state our what what our alders what our constituents want us to do. That's why they elected us. I mean, they want answers. They wanted something done. So that you know, I'm just trying to direct all the different directions that are going here, um, and that's all I have with that. So, and I talk about taxpayers' dollars and wasting time. We're not wasting any time here. Um, these are answers that people are asking us every day. How is it going down there? Um, this is Green Bay. We're, we're not. We don't care about what happens everywhere else. We're we're trying to take care of our districts, and. Uh, you know, it upsets me that there's there is controversy on this because I think it's straightforward why this isn't getting done. If there's a legal lawsuit that the city's in in this, then maybe none of this will ever get answered till this is all over with. Maybe it just has to stay on file for that long to get the answers, till everybody gets the answers. Because if you're talking about your taxpayers, they're not going to be happy till that's there. And that's all I have. Thanks, Alder. All right, any other comments? We've got a motion and a second to refer back to committee. All in favor will signify. Uh, request for the board has been used, so we will, we will do that. And this is not a motion to refer this item back to committee with the, um, with the details that Alder Weary had discussed. Thank you, Alders. You may vote. Yes, we have repeat of what we're voting. This is a referral back to committee. Provide the written report on machines from January 2020 to the present. Alder Stevens. Um, next protection policy is May 9th. Would you have a re report by then? By May 9th, or did we do the 23rd? Do you want to conclude the vote before? <laughs> we um, do have a roll call ongoing, yes. so yeah, so we should yeah finish it up. Okay, so um, can you go ahead? I'm ready to display. Okay. That motion succeeds 11 to 1. So the item has been referred back to committee um, to, to respond to Alder Stevens. Yes, thank you, Alder Stevens. Um, so it depends uh, because a written report of what I've verbally um, repeated is relatively simple, but a service history is not. So I don't know how long it would take me to get a service history. I don't know how long it would take me to get. Well, and just history. to just kind of re, to respond to this point more broadly, it's up to the chair to decide when items are discussed at committee. Um, so really, it's up to you, Alder Stevens, to discuss you know when those items are, are prepared to move forward. Sure. You know. I just want to, I guess, clarify that this probably will not be on Monday's meeting. It'll be in sometime in the future, sure, May or June. So. Okay, well, that's a that's a fair point. All right, uh, so we are now on to. Yes. Item 22. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. This item was pulled by Alder Brunette. You have the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of questions for Clerk Jeffries and then some questions, comments for the city attorney. Uh, Clerk Jeffries, do you have uh, enough financial resources to uh, effectively administer the August and November 2022 elections? I have the resources that council appropriated. Do you feel that that is sufficient to properly administer the April and November election? The August? August, my, my apologies. Those are the funds that you appropriated, so evidently you, as a council, believe that those funds are adequate for me to run those elections. You, you as clerk, as a department head, you submitted those budget numbers to the city mayor for his approval before he passed it on to the council. So do you agree with the amount of dollars that we allocated for you to run the four elections in 2022? So I will say what I said um, publicly, that there are several reasons why, you know, it's sometimes difficult to find poll workers. And um, there are many reasons out there. One of those reasons is pay, the low pay. 
So if, please answer the question directly. Do you have I'm having difficulty answering your question directly, unfortunately, uh, because I, I work with the resources that I've been given. If, if a grant, if an organization offering a grant to the city of Green Bay through your clerk's office offered financial resources to the, or the help of advisors to your office, would you uh, propose we accept the, the offer or are you against receiving all help from grants and outside money to fund election what, administration? What it's not. It's a perfectly. It's not. Alder, Alder Scannell, just minutes. hold on, hold on. Alder Scannell raises a point of order. What is it? You're talking about a future event and who knows what's going on during that time. Who could possibly make that decision? When we took the money last time, we we're in the middle of a pandemic. Alder Scannell, what's your specific point of order? My specific point is it's impossible to answer that question because it's a hypothetical, and who knows what uh, okay. Alder circumstances will surround uh, a hypothetical to make that decision. At the Alder, top Alder, of the meeting. Alder Burnett, just one second. Alder Burnett, you have the floor. Just try to you know focus your questions on the item at hand. Okay, at the top of the the agenda, the mayor said that the city council allocates financial resources to run city government. Clerk Jeffries confirmed that, obviously. The question is, as of right now, if we could definitively say we have enough and that Clerk Jeffries could come to the council through the mayor or directly, that she would request additional dollars. We do have money in contingency fund and we can completely, 100%, in my opinion, handle all elections through city funds, through the funds of taxpayers. So, um, you know, I think that's a fair question because we're talking about pushing forward, trying to uh, create ordinances or policies to prevent us from taking outside dollars, and it's a it's a legitimate question. I don't see how you could see it other otherwise, respectfully. Yeah. Alder Burnett still has the floor. Do you want so, to continue? So yeah, uh, yeah, Clerk Clerk Jeffries. I don't I don't remember her answer because I was uh, there was a point of order, which is fine, Alder Scandal. I don't I don't I, I'm not upset with you doing a point of order, but. It's pretty basic. Uh, there are a number of members on the council that want absolutely nothing to do with outside funds coming into our election. We don't want anything, at least I don't, any advisors. So I just want to know from the clerk if there's outside groups that come to her, because let's be honest, November 22, November of 2022 is going to be a very tense, controversial, partisan election. That's the way our country runs right now, and I don't like it, but it's just a reality. So to avoid all appearances of impropriety or actual impropriety, I just really would like to hear from her that she would be, uh, you know, leaning towards saying, no, we can do it on our own with taxpayer dollars. Point of order. Point of order. What's your point of order, Alder? Point of order is that's not the clerk's decision. That's this council's decision. I would hope if the, somebody came forward, she would pass that on to the council and the council would decide. That's not a, a decision for the, for the clerk. That's a decision for this council. And who knows what the council will make depending upon circumstances. And whatever the council makes is what the council decides. This isn't a, a decision for a clerk to make. This okay. is like it was last time. It's a council decision. Uh, to ask the clerk Alder. this, I think, is inappropriate. Thank you. Alder Burnett, you still have the floor. Yeah, so, I mean, Clerk Jeffries, could you just answer that question? Unfortunately, Alder, you're asking me to speculate. There is no group coming forward now with no monies in hand, with no offers of assistance. So it's very difficult for me to answer a question on something that doesn't currently exist. Okay, uh, fair point. Um, I think there will be money out there. CTCL has a five-year arrangement where they have $80 million to disperse to municipalities. So just uh, it was important for your answer to be on the public record, in my opinion. So thank you for that. Uh, one thing that I'm frustrated about in regards to this issue right now before us is that we have uh, an opinion from our attorney, two attorneys actually, but let's just say the law office, that is stating to us uh, the things that it states in that document. Uh, we cannot share that document. I cannot discuss that document with members of the public. It is a concern. We talk about election transparency and how we, as a body, this city council, this common council, which sets the policy for the city of Green Bay, then something as important as this, I can't even really ask Attorney Shot, uh, I'm sorry, Attorney Bungert, the questions that I want to ask because it's attorney-client privilege. So, having said that, I would 
like to make a motion to remove, uh, to clear the city of the attorney client privilege in regards to this agenda item so I can ask specific questions to the city, city, city attorney. What, what's the specific motion, Alder? Make a motion to remove the attorney client privilege on this agenda item so we can discuss the document publicly. Okay, Attorney Brunette makes a motion to waive attorney client privilege on this item, seconded by Alder Weary. Uh, attorney Bungert? Yes, before addressing the motion to waive privilege, I do want to clarify that while the document itself, which was a written opinion prepared by Assistant City Attorney Mather on the, the question of whether council has the authority to um, adopt an ordinance to ban um, outside funding from, or grants with outside funding for the administration of elections. The opinion was made on the record, um, and, and I can repeat the opinion on the record, which um, is that in the matter of election funding, it's preempted by the state. So it's essentially, it's a ma matter of statewide concern. So accordingly, the city at the municipal level doesn't have the requisite legal authority to pass an ordinance regulating or banning the use of outside grant money for elections. I did share with the entire council the backup documentation that was used as a basis for us reaching our opinion, um, which is that we don't have the authority to do so because the state is taking action, and that's evident by the fact that the, um, the legislature just passed a joint resolution for a constitutional amendment to the Wisconsin State Constitution banning the use of such funding. So it's clear that the state thinks that it's a matter of statewide concern, and their intention is to take that up. Obviously, right now, the session is, is, um, is paused. So when session resumes, my, my guess is it's, it's likely going to be taken up at that time. So whatever the state passes is going to trump anything that the council passes. Um, and I think Alder Scandal did make a point that the city council already has the authority to prevent the use of such funding because we have adopted or council has adopted more, more appropriately um, a grant policy. So anytime staff is approached by outside entities, whether it's grants to plant trees or grants to help with the administration of the election, that grant has to come before council and council has to review and accept the grant. So that power already lies with council um, and it's based on the facts of, of the grant and the parameters of the grant and how the grant is going to be administered. Um, if uh, if council did um, proceed with um, adopting such a legislation, it actually would render the decision of the grant acceptance process to an administrative level because at that point staff would be deciding as to whether a grant proposal is falling within the ban or not. So it actually would be taking some purview away from the council because right now the way the system is set up is every single grant application comes to council for approval. Now moving on to the attorney-client privilege issue. Um, Alder Brunette can certainly ask me any questions um, with respect to what questions you have, and I can provide you answers um, on the record that I feel wouldn't be violating privilege. The privilege that extends to the document is not the, the opinion, because the opinion was shared. The question was whether the city can do this action. The opinion the city attorney's office is we do not have the requisite authority because it's a matter for statewide. It's a matter of state, uh, statewide concern and a matter for the legislature to take up. Um, that's the opinion, um, and that's what our research is indicating. The document that was provided as a memorandum uh, contains attorney-client privilege information in the, event, in the sense that it, it's opinion uh, and research and um, impressions and work product that the attorney has prepared in confidence to share with the client, which is the city. Um, and that is what is privileged. But the opinion that was requested has been presented to council and has been now presented, presented twice on the record, once at PMP and once at council. Now with respect to waiving attorney-client privilege, that's not, it wouldn't be a proper motion because it's not a, it's not a, a, a mechanism of Robert's rules. Um, it doesn't operate the same way as suspension of the rules would. This would be a legislative act that is done by council. Um, so it's not something that would be able to be acted on tonight. It would be something that would have to be referred um, and recommendation would be, as I indicated at Protection and Policy, um, it would be, it, it's a significant act 
um, and, and there would be some significant um, parameters that would need to be set around it in order to, to mitigate um, any kind of collateral damage that could result um, as of waiving privilege. Um, I'm almost finished. <laughs> but to kind of take a step back to kind of just explain to counsel what attorney-client privilege is, um, to waive privilege or the ability to waive privilege is something that um, belongs to the client exclusively. Obviously, the alders are in a unique situation in that the extension of that privilege do isn't given to all of you in a singular form. Um, none of you hold it individually. That privilege extends to the council collectively, uh, meaning that um, the alders compromise the council, uh, and the council in of itself is a part of a larger entity, which is the city of Green Bay, and that is the organization that holds the privilege. Um, so it, again, it's not a procedural matter. Um, it, it's something that need, would need to be brought forth, um, adopted by majority. It would need to be noticed on the agenda uh, and forwarded on to council as any other item. Um, and, uh, and the city attorney's office would, would need to be directed to, to draft a written um, waiver of privilege so that um, scope of that waiver um, is specific um, so that we are mitigating um, as much as it can be mitigated um, any possible um, unintended liabilities that may arise from that waiver. Uh, thanks, Attorney Bunger. Mm -hmm. Anybody have the floor? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, that's a, a lot of words, quite frankly. And the, the public, and, and all due respect to you, Attorney Bungart, we have had our back and forths in regards to attorney client privilege. In the past, I have gone through great lengths to try to get outside, outside opinions of our law department to, to discuss these election matters. I have attempted to bring transparency to this process over and over. With all due respect to you, I just think yet it's another feeling that I get that I'm being diverted from something that is rather very basic. Just make this stuff publicly available. This government does not belong to us as people. This government belongs to the people. By their vote and consent, we have the privilege of sitting in these seats. Every two and four years, the people in this city can remove us from these positions. There is a crying out for transparency in this city. Very basic document, a page and a half, with the reasoning why our attorney's office told us we cannot create an ordinance. Somehow has to be under lock and key, hidden from the people that this city belongs to. Enough with this stuff. I've attempted to get attorney-client privilege so many times, and I've done it professionally. I've gone through the comments, and I've been very careful with what I say because I don't want to uh, 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 violate attorney-client privilege. I don't want to reveal anything that I shouldn't discuss because we discussed it in closed session. Enough with this. This is very basic. We don't need to hide this from the public. Yet we will. We'll continue on. I made a privilege. Uh, Attorney Bunker, can't you just simply read this document for the public? Again, my, my ethical obligations <laughs> prevent me from being able to disclose. So attorney-client privilege goes both ways. So, the, so I, I can't disclose something on behalf of the client when the client hasn't indicated that, they can dis, that I can disclose it. And secondly, there are repercussions to to waiving attorney-client privilege. And, and like I mentioned at committee, we, we don't know what those implications are going to be. Um, there can be a ripple effect because once you waive privilege, like you can't take that back. And, and it could be applied to tangential issues that maybe the subject or, or currently are the subject of, of litigation. What I did provide, again, trying to word it differently, um, I guess I, if I did not fully answer your question, I think maybe I would, I would ask the alder to, to clarify what part of the question or what part of the inquiry hasn't been addressed by the opinion that I stated on the record. Um, just stating the legal reasoning publicly. Okay, so the legal reasoning publicly is that the state legislature has priority over our authority to be able to pass an ordinance. Election funding is contemplated already under state statutes um, and is a matter of statewide concern. So anything that we pass will be preempted by state statute. 
So it's a matter of home rule. So the state essentially would take priority over making any kind of legislative action with respect to this issue. That is the reason, that is the basis for our opinion. Okay. Um, I had a feeling I would sort of get this sort of response. I'm trying to do things that I think would be appropriate for public disclosure. And I'll never apologize for that, not, never. And so in preparation for that, I had an idea. Let me know instead of creating an ordinance if this would be an acceptable uh, motion. Uh, it would be for the city council as the policy making body of the city government that we would like to uh, direct to the clerk's office, the mayor's office, the law department, the finance department, and the IT department that for the remainder of the 2022 election that those offices and personnel within those offices should not solicit, accept, or use any donation in the form of money, grants, property, or personal services from an individual or a non-governmental entity for the purpose of funding election-related expenses, voter education, voter outreach, or voter registration programs with the exceptions of compensation of poll workers, securing leases for polling locations, and PPE for voters and volunteers. So, Mayor, if I can, I can speak to yeah, that. So, I think I think we already have a motion and a second. So that would need to be a motion to amend. I'm not making the motion. I'm asking if that would be a oh, valid motion. Oh, sure. Okay. So you could do that as a motion to amend. But I think the suggestion would be, since we already have a policy with respect to the acceptance of grant funds, that we that staff would amend the current grant policy to include a caveat section for what you had just proposed. And just, just so I'm clear, the motion that was previously offered by Alder Brunette, you said was out of order, I think. Correct. So, okay. yes. so it's Oh, not. I'm sorry. Okay. Then yes. I thought I was, uh, I was under the impression that there was a motion to um, approve. There, yes. I mean, so there's still that underlying so motion. So the, the underlying the, motion is out of order, so that one will, can't be taken up. So then it goes back to the original motion, which I think was a motion to approve. Correct. So then it would need to be a motion to amend, to amend essentially the grant policy for staff to amend and then that can be brought back to protection of policy with okay. the amendments. So essentially it's it's sort of a referral back to committee with this recommendation <coughs> of, the, of the policy that mm -hmm. Alder Brunette is suggesting. Yeah. Alder, uh, Clerk Jeffries. Um, so I would suspect that Alder Brunette would give that to Attorney Bunkert in writing because there were some things in there that gave me pause that um, are not the entirety of election funding. So I think I would want to take a look at that. Sure. Thank you. Uh, well, now's a good time. What's the, what's the yes, question? Yes, I think I would need to see that in writing so that I can um, consider that more carefully. I will. It, it, it's um, something that the state of Alabama had put forward. I just modified it a little bit, but I think it would be good in this situation. So uh, if I could, uh, Attorney Bunger, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, what could I do to make that motion? Should I read it again? Is there any amendment to the, I, I was confused by that part with all their weary. Confused by which part? Would it be possible? I think for just for the record, we have what Alder Brunette had sent or had stated. So I think that's sufficient. I think for the minutes, it'll just reflect that the motion is to amend the grant policy um, as indicated by Alder Burnett um, and to refer to staff. And then Alder Burnett, if you'd like to send that to my staff separately, um, as I believe our staff will be the one, the one tasked with amending the, the policy, um, and then we can use those specifics. Um, how okay. soon would that take to create that? Um, I, I could, we could shoot for the second meeting in, um, in May for, for protection policy. I don't think we'll be able to turn it around for Monday's meeting. Okay. No, I don't like surprises. I, I, you know, I, I get a lot of surprises when the election stuff comes up. I think I bring forward rather sensible things to the public and to this body. Attorney Bungart, are mm -hmm. there going to be any swerves? And no offense to you, I know that sounds bad, but are there going to be any swerves or misdirections or anything that I'm going to be deterred from a very basic request? It seems oh. it happens a lot. No disrespect to you, but I'm just getting really tiresome of it. Alder, I, I, 
I apologize if you feel that way. I definitely don't intentionally ever try to swerve. I try to be as forthcoming and as knowledgeable and, and as robust in my answers as I possibly can so that you are presented with all the evidence and information that you need and that all the alders need in order to make an informed decision and perform their duties. With that, um, we're, I will take the same approach with, with this amendment. We will take whatever um, changes you've provided and we will, we will obviously have to review that against whatever laws are in play with respect to Wisconsin elections and we will present a draft accordingly for your debate and discussion at committee. Okay, so I mean, was the motion second? Should I read it again? Uh, attorney, could you re, re it wasn't second, I don't believe, but could could it be read back for the council before we vote? Do you have something? Uh, uh, what I have is amend the grant policy as described by Alder Burnett and refer to staff. That is what I have. Um, Attorney Bungart, could I include it in that motion? Because I, I know as a part of a motion, the public would understand what it is we're actually discussing. Sure, if you'd, if you'd like to read back the motion, that's certainly that's certainly within your or purview. If you'd sure. like to read uh, it back for the benefit of the alders and the council. Okay, so <clears throat> the motion would be to, uh, as a policy-making body of the city government, to refer to the clerk and the clerk's office and their staff, the mayor's office and his staff, the law department and her staff, the finance department and her staff, and the IT department and his staff uh, to uh, make it a policy that they will not solicit, accept, use any donation in the form of money, grants, property, or personal services from an individual or a non-governmental entity for the purpose of funding election-related expenses of voter education, voter outreach, or voter registration programs with the exception of compensation of poll workers securing leases for polling locations and PPE for voters and volunteers. Okay, motion uh, to refer back with all that language was made by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Eck. We have a few people still in the queue here. Uh, yeah, Alder Galvin's in front of you and then you're up. Alder Galvin, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, attorney Bungard, um, becoming an attorney, did you take an oath? I did. And, and what was that oath to do? To uphold, well, I took two oaths because I'm barred in the state of Illinois and also in the state of Wisconsin, but that was to uphold the constitution of both those states and the, the laws of those states as well as the <laughs> constitution of the United States. All right, and when you took uh, the job with the city of Green Bay and yes. were, was uh, as a city attorney, mm -hmm. was there any other obligations that you have to the citizens of Green Bay? My obligations are that to perform the duties of my job um, and to perform the duties and, and that are laid out to me um, under the Wisconsin statutes and under Wisconsin ordinances. And obviously, I, I am a member of the Wisconsin State Bar, so I have to adhere to all the ethical policies um, and, and codes that the State Bar requires of me. All right. If a police officer took an oath uh, to become a police officer for, say, the city of Green Bay, and he violated that oath, mm -hmm. what are the potential penalties? He would, or he or she would be potentially removed <coughs> from, from duty. And what about if an attorney did that? They have the potential to be suspended and or disbarred. All right. Has anyone at any time that, to your knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, in your office done anything to misdirect or stymie anything that any alder has directed your office to do? Unequivocally not. All right. Uh, then I guess I'm, I'm a little concerned that we, Alder uh, Burnett, has asked you to violate your oath here several times today. Point of order. I have and certainly I'm, I'm, not. I'm, I'm, Alder Galvin, come no, on. No, this, is, this has been going that. on long enough. Alder exactly. Galvin has. Alder you Galvin keep, has you keep insinuating. What's your point of order, Alder Point Galvin? of order is a real offensive thing. I never, never suggested that she violate her break, oath of office or break the law. Never. And you know that. No, I don't because you did it right here several times. You asked her to do it. And then, although no offense intended, you accuse her, our people in her office, of styming you several times. And I can see where that can be frustrating. I've been frustrated with our law department several times in the past. I continue to be frustrated with them on some things. But I've never once 
asked them to break their oath of office, or insinuated that they were purposely trying to stymie me. Thank you. Tell the governor, Alder Scannell. I don't understand what we're doing here. If, if I understand this correctly, the council has the authority to, when it comes to grant money, staff doesn't take money, they bring it to council. We wouldn't want staff doing this. So I, this seems like a redundant uh, amendment. They don't have the authority to take grant money. That's our job. They bring it to us, and then we decide. And it seems like, it just seems like they're sour grapes or something. I don't, well, I'm not even going to go there. So what? Who cares? Let's stick on point. Oh, I'm on point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't, the amendment's redundant. I don't support it. it. It doesn't make any sense. We have the authority. They don't, all along. I don't understand why this is a, a big issue or a concern or a, necess a necessity to be redundant like this. I, I don't support it for that reason. Thanks, Thank Alder. you. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, I'm glad, <clears throat> excuse me, got a little bit of thing going on. Um, <clears throat> we, we talked about the grants, and it sounds to me I appreciate the discussion that we've had, saying that you know grants. And I should ask: Are grants the only means by which outside monies can be accepted with the city? It sounds like that's it. I mean, there's there are other are there other means or ways that other funding can come to the city to monitor elections? You know, grants. You know, if we if we vote on grants, whether to accept them or deny them, is that the only avenue that we have for monies or anything coming in just through grants I guess that's I just need some clarification on that Do you have any response I'm not I don't I don't have the grant policy in front of me or pulled up but um, I I believe that don't like any type of donations have to come before the city can accept anything it has to have approval from the council when CTCL, so whether we are accepting no. <clears throat> infrastructure, whether we're, I'm sorry to interrupt, whether to, to um, whether we're accepting a gift or whether it's in the form of money or we're accepting a, a new fire truck or whatever it may be, the city has to officially accept it. So that would mean that council would have to approve it. So city staff at an administrative level can't accept anything like that. Well, that's, that's been repeated a few times. I feel fairly comfortable with that. You know, I, I feel good with that. Another question I have is uh, if we waive attorney-client privilege on this particular item, uh, do, we, do we permanently waive attorney cl What? He has the floor. Yeah, please, please. I don't interrupt you. I do? All right. Alder Story, go ahead. If we waive attorney-client privilege on, on a matter like this, do we permanently waive attorney-client privilege on other in the future on other matters? This is just the one matter we're talking about. I just want clarification that if we do it on this, do we permanently waive our waive our rights on that as well? Mm -hmm. So, attorney, if if attorney-client privilege is waived with respect to the memorandum that was prepared by my office in response to this um, in response to this inquiry um, privilege will be waived permanently on that but unless it's somehow narrowed in scope um, or if it is it could potentially waive privilege on other items that may be unknown to us um, based on <clears throat> tangential arguments or whether it's 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 ancillarily related in some way that's that's the difficult part with waiving privilege because it opens up that door and once that door is opened it can't be closed <clears throat> Pardon? I'm good for now okay. thank you we saw that. Then we have Alder Johnson and then Alder Weary <coughs> thank you mayor uh, question for clerk Jeffries uh, just because uh, this this question had been presented but perhaps a follow-up to it if in the course of managing the elections um, if council had not budgeted enough 
for you to appropriately manage those elections, would you come back to this body and ask for additional resources? Yes. Pretty simple. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Bunger, a uh, question for you. Yes. Uh, related to the, uh, the attorney client privilege memorandum uh, mm -hmm. that led to um, the decision, uh, why was this document labeled as attorney client privileged? Because it contains the thoughts, impressions, and opinions that of the attorney for the council and for the city um, in her research and in her um, opinions as to the inquiry that was made as to whether um, council had the authority to pass an ordinance banning the use of outside grant money in the administration of elections. Okay. Um, okay. And the reason I ask is it, mm -hmm. it, it you know, without obviously being descriptive, it's a pretty vanilla document. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, the, the thing that I don't want to walk away from here today is people thinking that, you know, it's this robust document filled with all kinds of things that the public needs to have access to. Um, it, it, I just wish it were public, quite frankly. Um, because sometimes, you know, it's, it's people will draw their own conclusions uh, when, when they can't see it. And, um, you know, and I think you, you gave a very uh, robust, detailed explanation of how, quite frankly, we came to that decision in the first place. So um, the, the one, you know, caveat perhaps to what you had shared publicly and, and I think why I would support Alder Burnett's motion um, is, is you had mentioned that the state legislature was taking action um, and, 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 of course, uh, had done so. Uh, but I think there's a difference between taking action and taken action uh, because it is still a very uh, open issue that hasn't been resolved at the state level. Um, and, and so I think it is appropriate for us to, to take a look at our grant policy. Um, I, I appreciate Alder Scannell's point that every grant does come before us and, and we have that decision. Uh, just as this body right now has the decision to limit the scope of that grant policy, just as that grant policy was created. So uh, I, I do support uh, having our law department draft something as, as that was outlined by Alder Burnett, and then of course this body having the opportunity to review it uh, at a future meeting. So Alder, uh, Alder Weary and then Alder. Al <laughs> Alder, Scan Alder Scannell, just hold on. Alder Weary, then Alder Scannell. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to piggyback first on, on Alder Johnson. Um, and I have to say this once a meeting because I feel like I have to. In my 20 years, mind you of somebody, okay. Uh, I've received and we've received a lot of us legal advice, all kinds of it, by email that we could freely share. Tons and tons and tons of it on all kinds of different things. And so the question was asked by Alder Johnson, why, why this one? Because it really... It's six paragraphs. I mean, it's not much. I mean, I would, we would all agree, not too complicated, really. Um, why does this one, if you, you could have decided just to give this advice and not have it privileged, correct, uh, attorney? I'm not sure how to answer that question. I guess I, we could have potentially not done the additional research and prepared a memorandum and I could have just orally given the statement and the opinion but then I wouldn't have the backup information to support my legal conclusion and my reasoning for the benefit of counsel to understand how we got to that reason. I understand and then that's been done on many items in the sure. past but not privileged just here's our advice on something. It's never. I, it, it I can't a, comment as to what's been right, well, done I'm in the you, past. And, and, I've been on here a lot longer than you, and I'm telling you, we've received legal opinions right. that weren't always privileged. It all depends on. This didn't on, have to be privileged. Didn't have to be. It, it's not a designation that I choose, Alder. Okay, it's a matter well, of what the content is and and how it comes to be. It's I understand. Not a, it's so, not a label. I understand. That Thank I you. Choose. Thank you for your answer. Um, I guess, do you stand behind the opinion 100%? Because did you know that Walworth County last month passed such an ordinance? Yes, I'm aware. You did know that, and so you're thinking they're blatantly breaking the law. Uh, that's not my opinion. Um, we did research that, that ordinance and the executive memo that went with that ordinance, 
and they didn't provide any legal research as to any support as to their legal authority to pass the ordinance. All right, thank you. I mean, I, I think however we do it, this should be released at some point, whether we have to go through the, the hoops and jump around and release such a simple document, fine, we can do that. Um, the purpose of referring this back for a draft is pretty simple. To state in writing, loud and clear, do not enter, do not apply, we don't want it. Unequivocal, there's no gray area, there's no maybe, there's no wink and a nod. We don't want private dollars to help manipulate and calculate very calculative outreach efforts. We don't want that. Do you want to help us with wages, some PPE, some leases? Yeah, you know what, maybe. But when it gets into outreach and how it's done, that's where it crosses the line and that's where we have to say no. That's what people are upset about. That's why we're doing this. That's why we say right up front. Don't say, oh, well, down the line, let somebody apply and we'll look at it. No, right up front, say no. No, thank you. Move along. Thank you. Alder Scannell, then Alder Eck. Uh, yeah, first of all, I believe I misquoted. Uh, I said this is redundant. It's not that we're limiting or doing anything. We're just spinning our wheels. It's redundant. We already have this authority. This, this does nothing. So it's not that we're, we're, we're changing anything. We're just piling on to the same more verbiage of what we already do. I don't see any point in that. Uh, secondly, uh, for a uh, uh, city attorney, is it that this is a work document that it's privileged? Is that why it's privileged? Because it's a, working, a work document given from the attorney to the client? <laughs> It, it's privileged because it's it's communication between an attorney and their client giving the legal advice that the attorney has prepared to advise the client. So in order for an attorney to be able to effectively do their job, there has to be the, the protection of confidence that mm -hmm. they can freely exchange and provide legal advice and opinion that's going to solely be between the attorney and the client. That's, that's the way that it works. It's, it's a foundational aspect of, of legal practice. Um, and so that's why it's privileged. It's, it, we don't label things as privileged or not privileged. It, it, by the, the sheer fact that it contains an attorney's opinions and legal advice in a fully, in, a, in an environment and in a landscape in which she knows that it's confident so that she can fully and zealously advocate, advocate for and advise her client as to all the different aspects of the issue that are, are being asked. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Thanks, Alder, Alder Ack, and then, oh, oh, you're mm -hmm. still on? Yeah, yeah, Go ahead. there's more. <laughs> Push on. Uh, Comments were made about uh, certain aspects of grant funding that was taken. Again, that was a council decision. And again, to rob a future council. And I, I'd like to, again, remind everybody, pandemic. Hello, pandemic. This all happened during a pandemic. Can you spell louder? Pandemic. More. Nope, that's enough. I hope. Oh, I seem to have to often repeat this, that... People act like we are acting under normal circumstances. These are emergency circumstances. And to say that certain parts of the funding were inappropriately used without evidence of that, show me your evidence. There's no evidence. This is you know what, you talk about optics. This is the optics of the 2020 election. Pandemic, and we got grant money, and we look at all that, where that money went. And it seems like the big issue is with a navigator. It doesn't seem like anything else is wrong, if I'm understanding things right, okay? This election uh, had more people voting, Republican and Democrat. It was the biggest turnout for both parties. Show me where the navigator played favoritism. And then we've got something to talk about. You can't, you can't. Because it didn't, it's not there. It's all in your heads. Point of order, are we talking about voter navigators? We're talking about voter navigators and this law and why we're making this law. I don't think this is about voter navigators. 
Alder Weary, I have the floor. Alder Weary, the point Alder Weary, okay, point of order. Alder Weary, you referenced outreach, so I think it's fair to I say that navigators are navigator. included in that. Outreach, then. I will change yeah. the word from navigator to outreach. Yeah, I don't know what you the difference what I'm is. Talking about, Mr. Mayor. Outreach. Well, I don't. So perhaps you need to share it with the rest of us. If there was something that was illegally done or not appropriately done, I've asked this again and again and again. Where's your evidence? Show me your evidence. And I get crickets from people who keep pushing this. Show me your evidence. Otherwise, what are we doing here? This is a waste of the taxpayer's dollar. If there was something wrong, fine. Let's bring it forward and address it. I've kept saying that. I get nothing. Show me your evidence and let's fix it. Otherwise, all this is nonsense. It's total nonsense. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alder. Alder Eck? Okay. Oh, um, so again, it's, it, it, it really it isn't a matter of trying to prove something one way or the other. I'm just saying that um, it's being transparent. Um, and I, I just wanted to clarify it because it's been a while since you've read it. Um, Alder Brunette, um, did that also include, um, or how can we include the, like say consultants and other services where money wasn't changed hands? Um, and were there people, are there, I think Alder Stoyer asked, are there other means of getting money without grants? I don't recall if that it was answered. Um, is there money or people, people that, um, or consultants or, you know, that would be outside of the grant money Alder to Burnett. be approved. Uh, I think um, it would be good for Clerk Jeffries to read back the motion on the floor. I think that would answer your question. Okay. Do you have it? I think, no, I think I, you're I the one that has it all there. Oh, fair point. Uh, so basically um, it says in here that we would uh, not, uh, solicit accept use any donation blah blah uh, well I'll just say I don't want to say blah 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 fill in the blank but uh, to or use any donation in the form of money grants property or personal services from any individual or a non-governmental entity for the purpose of funding election related expenses voter education voter outreach or voter registration programs again not entirely my words. I plagiarized this from the state of Alabama because I was doing some research on things that could do what it is that I like to do, but not do it under the form of an ordinance. So. Alder. Thank you, Alder. Alder Grant and then Alder Burnett. Um, actually, yeah, Alder I answered my question. I was just asking for clarification because, yeah, Alder Scandal said that it was redundant, but I thought there was a difference in it, so that clarified it. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett? Yeah, and for the sake of the council, I'll say that it's referred back to the committee. The committee can decide to amend it, to adjust it, and I'm sure Alder Scannell will have plenty to say when it gets before that committee, when it gets to the committee level. All right, so uh, real quick, and then I'll just drop it. I do have a question because it came up a few times. Attorney Bungert or Clerk Jeffries, you were both involved to some capacity in the November 2020 election. When we uh, approved the um, the safe voter plan or whatever that official document is when we took the CTCL funding, CTCL. In that document, was there any reference to the National Vote at Home Institute, the, U the elections group, U.S. Digital Response, Brennan Center, or the Center for Secure and Modern Elections? Do you recall? I'd have to look at the document. So it, actually, the document's online. Yeah, it's a public document. It's a public I, I, document. I know, I, I know, and I usually pull that up, but I just so, thought of it. and I, I don't, I don't want to go away from my screen, and my laptop is dead, unfortunately. So it is a public document that anyone can look at to see if those um, entities were named in the, um, the initial grant. Sorry, the initial grant document that was offered in the summer of 2020. So, okay, thank you. And, and at that time, if it was part of that document and I overlooked it, shame on me. I don't recall seeing it in the document, but I do remember a few months or a month or so before the November election, 
we had uh, started getting help from those advisors and that's what kind of caused me to be like what the heck are we doing why can't green bay run our own election why do we need help from outside entities so in my research ctcl uh, uh mr zuckerberg of facebook fame will not be uh, funding election administration through grants this year he's sitting this election out but the center for tech and civic life has secured a five-year uh, funding arrangement where they'll put 80 million dollars to elections so the organizations that are partnering with the Center for Tech and Civic Life are, and I, I'm going somewhere with this, bear with me, the U.S. Alliance for Election Excellence, the Center for Civic Design, Center for Secure and Modern Elections, the Elections Group, Hazo Platner Institute of Design, the, Dis, the D School at Stanford University, Prototyping Systems Lab at UC Davis, and the U.S. Digital Response. So when you think about the mood of the public right now, Ask yourself, do the members, do a good number of people in Green Bay, want the city to get involved with, any, all due respect to those agencies, I don't know them, but do you really think at this point that the public wants us to engage with any of those groups or any group? We need to fund and run our own elections. Bottom line, this allows us to do that. It puts the guardrails in place. It makes our, our, our voices as a body definitively say, we can do this by ourselves. Clerk Jeffries needs help, but she needs funds. Come to this body and we will take it from contingency. We'll use the excess Oneida money that we're holding for um, rebranding. We will do something. We can take care of our elections in Green Bay without this list of groups. We need to restore trust. So I think it's a valid motion. I think it's a good motion. And I think as a council body, we are asserting ourselves and saying, we can't do this anymore. We can't. It's done. Move forward. Don't make the mistakes from the past. Let's do it the right way. Thank you. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alder Burnett, uh, in your proposal, uh, you, I think, uh, refer to volunteers not paid. A volunteer to come and help the city? Is that, did you, did, did you, did you have reference to volunteers or? Un unpaid people you know aren't part of whatever organization yeah. or not. if I could mayor uh, so the the again it'll go to a committee they can right. hash Absolutely. it over there but my my purpose is that yes the policy is we can take money for three specific purpose paying poll workers to um, you know secure locations and PPE for voters and volunteers so you might have heard the volunteers as part of the PPE okay but I thought you had something against volunteers that, that you didn't want volunteer certain I don't know I can't personal services or something like that yeah again I just took this from Alabama okay uh, it's just that that targeted voter like the analytics these are the voters that we're gonna really target with a get out to vote operation I, I, don't, I think that's discriminatory it's just so okay yeah. so, so I had some very nice young ladies from East High School uh, who were fluent in, in Spanish and as a poll worker at the presidential election my main job that whole day was to register unregistered voters and they they helped out a lot um, and I don't know how they came to be there I don't know if the city solicited them or the school offered up their services or they just walked in and offered up their services but I'd like to think that that we won't be against something like that in the future right I wouldn't okay thank we'll you just amend it okay Maybe. a lot of discussion anybody else Seeing none, we have a motion uh, to refer this uh, back to the committee with all the language that was been offered by Alder Burnett. I think that was sec seconded by Alder Weary. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Alder Eck, my apologies. Board vote, Mayor. Thank you. Sure, we will use the board. Thank you, Alders. You may vote. Motion succeeds 10 to 2. We're now on to protection policy committee granting operator licenses. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Yeah. Thank you. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. Um, any names to be handled separately here or abstentions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Plan Commission. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any items here to be handled separately? 
none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Report of the Finance Committee. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. Items here to be handled separately. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Park Committee. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Weary. Items here to be handled separately. Four. Four. Any others? Item four will be handled separately. Hearing no others, all in favor of the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, item four, your wishes here. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Scannell. This item was pulled by Alder Johnson. Alder, you have yep. the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Director Ditch, I, I, I watched the Parks Committee on this. Could you just, uh, for the for the benefit of full council, just give a little bit of overview here on um, what we did with this program last year. Um, maybe recap, uh, I guess, the report back that, sure. that St. John's had for us. Uh, and then kind of talk a little bit about how in the in the past, of course, we, we this was a council approved program. Uh, so could you also explain to us how moving forward this this does not have council oversight? Yes, I'd be happy to answer your question. So last year was the first initial year of the engage program. Uh, it was a concept that was brought forward by the St. John's homeless shelter uh, to create an engaged homeless shelter uh, program. Uh, which would benefit uh, the homeless population and provide services to them to help them find housing opportunities, help find jobs, et cetera. And so they ran the program out of St. John's Park last year. Uh, they funded it, they staffed it, and that's why it went through uh, committee and council last year for approval. Uh, it was a program initiated, sponsored, and run by St. John's Homeless Shelter. Uh, so we did bring this to committee several times throughout the year. So we had the initial approval that went to committee and council. Uh, we had a report halfway through the season last year talking about uh, issues uh, that have come up throughout the year and how we're handling them. And then we had a final report at the end of the year, which was a summary of the entire program. And uh, we talked about you know crime that happened and you know what was successful and wasn't uh, successful. And we did a recap. Uh, since then, uh, we've had our staff members uh, have had uh, many conversations uh, with the various entities that assisted with that program last year, in addition to the homeless, uh, St. John's Homeless Shelter. Uh, so there's a homeless task force in, in Green Bay, of which there's a lot of different um, uh, entities involved with that task force. And what we found out last year, kind of towards the end of the year, is St. John's lost some staffing, and they just, as they reevaluated the program for this year, uh, they determined that they can't run it the same way that they did uh, last year. And so what's different between this year and the reason why there isn't a, a council approval and a parks committee approval for the program is because the city is gonna take the initiative on um, coordinating that program this year. So St. John's will still be involved, but more or less they're just gonna come in in the evening hours to provide a, a meal for the homeless population. Uh, and then they'll have staff members there to encourage uh, and help uh, assist uh, individuals with housing options and other um, things that come along. In addition to that, uh, park staff will work with other entities in the communities, and those entities are listed in that report. Uh, to have them come in at various times throughout the summer uh, to provide additional services and assistance with the homeless population. And so the, the game plan this year is for us, the city, to take that initial lead. And then we'll assess it throughout the entire summer. If we find out that it's successful, we'll continue with operating that program uh, through the season. Uh, if we find that we run into a stumbling block where really uh, there are no um, outside entities coming in to assist, then we'll reevaluate it and, and we might uh, consider a different option halfway through the summer. Um, but right now, that's, that's the way that we're moving forward with this. Um, and so we, we gave a report. Uh, typically for our recreation programs, we're not required by um, 
to run those through Parks Committee and City Council to, to run recreation programs. So, so that's why this was on as informational only. That being said, if any alders or council members would like to take a different approach, obviously it can be referred back to the count or back to committee uh, to discuss other ways of approaching it this year. So, so essentially, just so that I understand correctly, this is being treated as a recreational program, more or less, uh, with a you know other the city coordinating other entities coming in. So, this the city isn't going to staff this program. Uh, what we are going to do is coordinate with the other entities to come in and facilitate different programs throughout the summer in the parks. Okay. So, you know, the first thing I want to do, of course, is, I mean, con commend, I mean, the programs within our community that are trying to address this problem. There's many of them. Um, and, 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 of course, I just, I, I don't want this, I mean, we should never be undermining the work they do. It's incredibly difficult. It's incredibly noble and, and um, obviously very grateful to have them in our community but I still think we ought you know we still owe it to ourselves to have an honest conversation and asking difficult questions shouldn't mean that we're opposed to serving our homeless community and I want to make sure that that issue does not get confused um, but I've received quite a few calls from folks around this area both residents and businesses um, that would say that this program was not successful and I think it sounds like even St. John's by their their testimony here before this body said it wasn't as successful as they had hoped it would be um, we're going to try to make some modifications but some of the the red flags of course that come up and as I watched committee I believe there were over 200 police calls to the park last last summer is that correct I don't have the statistics in front of me, uh, but I will tell you that um, what I recall from having the conversations with uh, the police department is, yes, the number of calls were greater than previous years, but that's because there was a continued presence within the park. Uh, so we were able to head off those issues before they became severe problems. So although there were quite a few, uh, a number of additional calls over the previous year, those calls were were much more minor than they were previously and okay so and st john's always had staff there right as part of this program and and now based on the way that this program is being proposed it wouldn't always be staffed is, is that correct that's correct yes. so does that create more problems or less problems in terms of police calls well, we're hoping that it'll be more successful than the year prior to, to the Engage program starting. Uh, if you recall, uh, we, you know, at that year, we had a, a very large presence of home, homeless population in that park. Uh, it was very problematic the year before last. So I, I think there were a lot less issues last year, and we're hopeful that you know, with this program moving forward, uh, it'll continue to be better than if there was no program at all uh, because there will be some presence in the park versus no presence in the park okay so one of the things i remember last year um, when when the program was brought before us is that we were told that park hours would be enforced and maintained uh, and that clearly did not happen uh, so i guess what assurances does this body have that that will happen this year and we'll work closely with the police department on that. Uh, last year we did, uh, I would say at least halfway through the year, maybe closer to the end of the year, we did start to approach it a little differently than we did at the beginning or the middle of the summer. Uh, so what we ended up doing is we created, we installed some gates and we proactively locked those gates at night. And we worked with the police department to you know, make sure that that was taken care of on a nightly basis. And then the following morning when the park opened up, we would unlock the gates. So I think it got better. Uh, I don't think it solved the problem 100%. Uh, because the fencing that's there is not very tall fencing and people can jump the fence. Uh, but we did find that it was a little more successful than not doing, uh, than what we had previously done. Okay, and I appreciate that. I, I didn't, actually someone had mentioned to me that those gates were put up and I think, I think that was a really good uh, proactive decision to make. Um, just some, you know, some, some high level feedback that had been given to me, obviously, and things that I had driven by a number of times and personally observed, of course, were the overnight, uh, the overnight sleeping, large quantities of debris and trash throughout the park. 
Uh, I know this was something that our police department Facebook page had posted about uh, the large volume of food donations and other supplies that were being delivered to the park and set out for days and not being uh, kept and maintained. Um, you know, so, so, you know, one of the things that I really want to understand, I guess, going into this year, I mean, who is responsible for doing daily checks and elevating the standard with how we maintain the appearance of that park? Because it is important. And part of that to me is closing gates every night, uh, making sure restrooms are, are locked up at night, just like they would be in any other park, uh, daily cleanup of debris and trash, and quite frankly, a lot of undesirable things. I mean, essentially, this, this went from a park that was used by families in the neighborhood that can no longer be used for that purpose. And so I just kind of would like some, some feedback from you on what we can do, again, to elevate the standards with how we maintain what's happening there. And, and really just is this our best option in terms of addressing the community need that we have? To answer your first and, I, and by the way, I, I fully understand and appreciate that you cannot solve the homelessness problem. And thank, I understand that. Thank you for understanding that. Uh, ultimately, it, it falls upon the city. It, it is a city park. It's our facility. It's up to us to make sure that the garbage is emptied in a timely manner and, and to make sure that, um, you know, that we don't have issues with uh, encampments uh, on the property. Uh, there will be a daily presence by St. John's there uh, through the meal program every evening. Uh, so even though, and, and staff is there on a daily basis locking the gates and opening it up too. So, you know, we are monitoring it uh, and we will continue to do so. Could we do a better job with it? We can definitely try to do a better job with it. Um, but a lot of it depends on how many people are in the park and, and how problematic is it um, outside of uh, the hours of the program. Uh, so are people uh, jumping the fence and still sleeping underneath the shelter at night? Um, and because we can't have somebody there 24-7. Um, and I guess I just kind of go back to what we saw uh, the first year of COVID two years ago before this Engage program uh, was put into place. I think what we ended up last year was a, a big improvement over that prior year. And I can't really tell you um, or point to any particular one instance to tell you how it got to that point uh, the previous year before the program. Uh, but we're hoping that by continuing to offer a program and continuing to have a presence in the park, not just with park staff, the police department, but also these other entities, um, you know, there will be eyes on the park and, and we'll continue to, to monitor it and, and keep it clean and safe as we go. Okay. As best and, as we can. Yeah, and I just, I, I, I want us to tread carefully because while I appreciate the additional partners that have been brought to the table, I don't know that that necessarily translates into more structure mm -hmm. and, and, you know, really properly maintaining a park facility for that neighborhood. And, and the reason for my questioning, of course, is because of the concerns that have been expressed to me by business owners and, and residential neighbors in that area. Uh, and I want to make sure. I haven't decided yet if, a, if I'll bring forward a formal communication, so I know this is just a report tonight. So, of course, you know, happy to support a receive in place on file. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm properly addressing the concerns of the folks in that area while simultaneously being sensitive to, to really the needs at hand of, of, you know, working with our individuals that are experiencing homelessness uh, because that is a, a serious challenge that our community faces. And, you know, I, it's, you know, and I think we can simultaneously address both. Uh, and, and, and I, like I said, I know you're not, uh, Dan Ditchite, Parks Director, is not going to solve the homelessness problem for the city of Green Bay. Um, uh, but obviously, as policymakers, we do have a responsibility to, uh, to that discussion. So I appreciate you sharing your insight tonight. And I guess I have one, one additional thing to add to the conversation. Uh, if, you, if anyone does so choose to put in a communication to the Parks Department, be more than happy to um, give a report mid halfway through the summer. Uh, just like we did last year to talk about what's working, what isn't, and maybe how we could approach things differently uh, for the rest of the season. So that's an option too. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Thanks, Director. Um, Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> piggybacking a little bit with Alder Johnson said, um, you know, it is a big issue, a big problem, et cetera, but um, 
I guess one of the things that came up at, at committee, we were talking, I'm on Parks Committee as well, so we were talking about the fact that St. John's, they, they do the meal program, so that's about three hours in the evening. They don't have the staff capability, it sounds like, to be there the whole day. So I think uh, there might be a little more, uh, folks might feel a little better if you could have to make sure that there's somebody in the park at all times, some kind of, I don't want to use the word control, but Director Ditchay, could you expound on that? Because it seemed like there might have been a few holes here and there during the course of the day. I know at night it's a little more difficult, you know, uh, controlling that, but during the course of the day, do you feel confident that there are enough offices or folks there that can monitor, kind of work with the folks that are there? I think realistically there will be holes in, in, in the days. Uh, mm -hmm. How often those holes occur, I, I can't tell you at this point. Um, you know, we're still working with the various entities to uh, get commitments to certain days and times. <coughs> But I would say that probably on a daily basis, there will be holes in the schedule where there will be no one in the park. And I guess you know the other alternative is uh, we, we don't run any program and then there's nobody there on any given day. Uh, and so I guess that just needs to be taken into consideration also. Right. One thing I'd like to add too, I know Alder Galvin had requested a report from the police department some time ago and, and the police would come to our protection and policy committee and, and give statistics. It was very helpful as far as our committee, just understanding the issue when we found out that there might be four or five individuals that had recurring problems and a lot of the problems fell on those folks. So a lot of the police calls dealt with a couple of individuals rather than a whole group. That was good for me to understand that a little bit better. So I, I'm emboldened by the fact that there are some things that are going on right now with with that uh, with that committee you know talking about those issues but also that the parks department is taking a leadership role and at least trying to do something but again you know for the downtown districts you know like Alder Johnson said you you've got businesses and you've got homes that have concerns Navarino neighborhood I remember had concerns in the past and I think we're trying to work as well as we can with everybody so I do appreciate all those efforts Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Eck? Um, yes, I, I, I made a few notes here. Um, I'm a, also on the Parks Committee. Um, and I think I'm, I misunderstood something, and so I wanted to clarify because I remember bringing up the fact that there can be inclement weather and suggesting that we're, if we're partnering with St. John's Homeless Shelter that couldn't there be a way of using the building during the day with the different entities um, so as a partnership, um, I just feel like it's a better use of our resources and it's bringing them inside out, out of the weather. You know, there can be rain and I know there's a little bit of a shelter there, not much, but it's an open air shelter. So I, I guess at, my, at the, at the parts committee, um, I did ask about that and that my understanding was, is it was going to be indoors for these different programs. Thanks, Alder. Is that a question or? Uh, well, clarification from Director Ditchay. Okay. For clarification with that, uh, St. John's Homeless Shelter, I believe that they also operate and run the MICA Center, if, I, if I'm correct. Uh, they strongly encourage uh, and they would like uh, the population to use their facilities. Uh, so when they're on site, they encourage that, uh, they promote that and they would happily accept people to come to either facility uh, at any given time. So, and they'll continue to do that through, throughout the summer. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't think our park department should be uh, the entity that is dealing with the homeless people in our community. Unfortunately, it has fallen on their shoulders, um, no one else in the city is in a position to do anything with it and it falls on her shoulders only because of St. John's Park. Um, my personal belief is that many of these individuals are uh, resistant um, to help. Much of that is due to alcohol and drug uh, addictions which are put in place mainly because of a lot of mental health issues and this is how they medicate themselves. 
either because they can't be seen at the Brown County Mental Health Center. There's at least a three-month waiting list to see a psychiatrist there. And to get follow-up care is just as long. Uh, so these people go off the rails, and they go off the rails pretty fast. Um, I went out with a police officer, talked to some of these individuals on uh, one day. Um, I saw some uh, counselors there from uh, foundations, uh, counseling services. They, they provide some services. Uh, my, my concern is we're locking up St. John's, and what we're doing is now we're throwing a hand grenade in the middle of that crowd, and they're dispersing all over the place. I'm getting calls about, and, and not even in my district, um, uh, from individuals who are concerned about finding people in their apartment basements, uh, their apartment lobbies, uh, in their garages, um, in the doorways, um, sneaking into businesses, using their facilities. Um, and I understand the MICA Center is open, but again, we're dealing with people that have a lot of ongoing issues. And uh, we've got police officers dedicated to that. We've got officers out um, beating the bushes, uh, helping to find these individuals, trying to get them the services they need. So the city's putting a lot of money into this. Uh, but if you look at the structure, we're not set up for that. We gave up that ability and we turned it over to Brown County several years ago. And I know they have New Cap is, is their, their uh, group that they've hired to help. I know that uh, we have the several foundations uh, that are working on homelessness, but I, I think the city needs to reach out to Brown County. I know we have, I think we have some uh, council members that are still on the county board. We need to get more out of Brown County. We need more help. Um, you know, we're looking at somewhat of 60 to 80 individuals in that park at a time. Uh, and like Alder Johnson said, we can't use the park anymore. Um, children, uh, parents won't take their children there, but it's spreading now. It's at St. James Park last summer. It's at the park across the street from the YWCA where many children uh, go out to play during the day. And we're starting to have more and more complaints at these parks. Um, as I drove here today, I saw several individuals sitting in St. John's Park. Uh, the, and St. John's closed, uh, I think it was, what, May 1st, April 30th? So they're no longer open. So where do these people go? How much more can the city do? How much more can we put into this? We have officers de dedicated to mental health. Um, they're not out there doing traffic stops. What they're doing is trying to prevent other calls for service by interacting with these individuals and getting them the help they need. But that's not, shouldn't solely be on the shoulders of the city of Green Bay. We need more help, and I think the place we need to go to is Brown County, and we need to get them more on board, providing more help, more services, more mental health. There's a lot of solutions out there that a lot of communities have tried. Wet houses is one example. It's kind of a hard pill to swallow if you understand what it is, but it has worked in some communities. But I have a hard time having constituents who call me to complain. They're afraid to send their children out to the parks or they're seeing certain actions take place in the parks or on the streets around Green Bay. And, and again, the answer shouldn't be, it's well, they're in Green Bay, it's Green Bay's problem. This is a countywide problem. And I think we need to ask for more from the county. Thank you. Is Alder Alder Weary? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you know, park chairman, I'm looking at it a little bit differently. St. John's Park during the summer, as we know, is, is functionally not a, not a family-friendly park. Are you going to send your kids there to play by themselves? Probably not. No, I would not. Kind of defeats the purpose of having a park, really. Um, when St. John's pulled out uh, Director Ditchay, did you volunteer to run Engage, or, or were you directed to run it? This was a decision that the Parks Department made, so we were not directed by, by any entity to run this uh, program. Uh, like I said, we are part of the Homeless Task Force along with a lot of other entities in the community. Uh, we strategized as a group. If there was no one in one particular group who could staff it all year long, what would be the best approach uh, still to, to take care, try to uh, alleviate some of the issues at the park versus doing nothing? Uh, so this was something that the Parks Department offered as an option to do the coordination, trying to get different entities in the park to still provide a service and take care of some of these issues that the neighborhood is, is, is um, 
is coming up with due to the homeless population in this park. Uh, so this was kind of a group decision. I would not uh, say that there was anybody forcing it upon the Parks Department. All right. Thank you, Director. I, it's not an easy thing to take on. You know, be careful what you wish for. I think Alder Galvin really, really did a nice, a fine job of, of who we should lean on, and that's the county. You know, really, their human services, that's their function and responsibility. Really, they should be the number one on here, and we can partner with them not us running it and I think we could probably all agree on that because look what it's doing to our park they need to really take the ball here and I don't apologize I don't think we have anybody left anymore who does both duties Alder Gavin for a long time it was everybody and then it was kind of half and then it was a fourth but I don't think anybody here's on the county board anymore so um, certainly though everybody here reached out to our county people and Mr. Mayor and, and Director I know you have those contacts they need to do more this isn't just our issue and it seems like everybody wants to ignore it and it's causing problems with the park that's meant to be for kids and families, and, and it's just kind of everybody's ignoring it. And, and I commend you for trying to do something. It's not, not an easy thing. It's very complex, and it's, you know, I, I, I wish wish us well, but it, we have to find another solution. And I'm gonna I'm gonna lean heavily on you, Alder Johnson, to your district. I'm sure you'll you'll let us know if it's going sideways or if you think of another approach might be needed. But I'm certainly not comfortable with this, and I expect to have a better solution here at some point. But I appreciate the report and. Uh, Thanks for, I guess, trying to do something, but we need to get our park back. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments? Yeah. Uh, not showing up for me, but um, Alder Burnett and then Alder Scannell. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, a lot of the comments that were shared were comments that I was going to mention, but a real direct question to either the police chief or Director Ditchite. Now, when we have parks, there's user groups. You know, when we had Hino Sra, it was the fat tire bikers infringing in the opinion of the walkers and skiers on, on a user group, and there was tension there. Our parks should be open to all. Obviously, in this situation, the user group would be uh, a homeless population, and that is a population I believe we all care about. They're marginalized, but yet they're still a member of our community they're they're living souls and quite frankly all of us at some point in life if we hit a rough patch could end up homeless ourselves okay we know that so we got to keep in mind the human you know reality of who we're dealing with um, but what I'm worried about with user groups children and their families should be able to go to a city park that's their right as well and so director Ditchite and chief Davis do you feel children and perhaps their older siblings are safe when they enter St. John Park under this program, if it's in place. I guess what I would say to that comment or, or question is, um, everybody has the right to go into the park. I know last year we had a lot of questions as far as whether or not we would close the park to the public as in general. Uh, we did not close the park to the public uh, last year. I think what we found, or at least what St. John's told us, is early in the year, uh, the families maybe not, or some individuals were coming into the park early in the season when the program first started. I think that that kind of waned towards the end of the year. Um, I will tell you, I would totally understand everyone's concerns with sending their children to the park. Um, and it's something that we'll continue to work with the police department to uh, try to alleviate those concerns. But um, I, I guess that's, I don't have a better answer than that at this point. Okay. Uh, Chief Davis, you know, you, you, you're, you're tasked with the responsibility of protecting sure. the public. What's your professional opinion? Should families and children, you know, feel danger when they enter that park? Well, I don't think it's any secret that at least in the short time that I've been here, we have observed some things that tend to indicate risk to people coming to the park for other uses. I, you know, I think that that's just there, and we have to be realistic about that. I think what we're trying to do is to mitigate that risk. I mean, it, there is risk involved in going to any city park at any time, and you're never going to make all the risk go away. But I think if we're able to work together on a program like this and we're able to address the antisocial behavior, that is one small part of a much larger picture of what's going on in that park, I think we can reduce that risk. And I think that needs to be our focus. And we're certainly willing to work with the Parks Department on, on 
being able to balance all of these needs so that they're not in competition with one another. You know, you, the reason why we have accountability systems, obviously, is to deal with people who choose to engage in antisocial behavior, in particular in public spaces. And, um, you know, that's our commitment to working with the Parks Department to make sure we can balance all that out. So, and no other questions, but it's a tough situation. We know this. You have two professionals here and then a third city department where they're trying to work through the issue collectively. And I wish there was a better way. And obviously, I have loving care for the homeless population. Um, but the fact that as a parent myself, that I would not feel comfortable sending my kids or allowing my kids to enter a city park with that other use. And the fact that a city council member feels that way, uh, I don't think it's fair to the public who lives in that neighborhood that they cannot enjoy a park that belongs to them just as much as that other user group. So I don't know what the solution is. I also lean on Alder Johnson to hopefully come up with a solution. If it was my district, just like you, I would express the same concerns you have. We cannot exclude members of the public from a park from which they're entitled to enjoy just like any other user group. That's the issue. So anyways, okay. thank you. Stating Alder. the obvious. Alder Scannell? Uh, yeah, I, I think we're confusing a program with homelessness issues. Any program that addresses homelessness is a positive. The issues that that park is going to face where the, is only going to be worse without a program, any program anywhere in the city. Anywhere we can get a program that addresses homeless issues is a good. The issues at that park are concern about uh, other people using the park. Well, while we have staff there or there are personnel there to deal with homeless people, that's not going to be an issue. It's when they're not there. Well, if they're not there, period, <laughs> then you've just got more of that. Uh, the issues have been, you know, when people sleeping there, well, that's not part of the program, and they're going to do that anyway. That, 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 that's got nothing to do with the program. People bringing food there, well-intentioned, very bad, you know, practice that does not help at all. Again, that's got nothing to do with the program, and that would go on. That stuff's going to go on. That's a homeless issue that's going to be there no matter what the program or not programming is anywhere in the city. So I uh, completely support and encourage programs. The more programs, the better. I think uh, coming out of COVID, hopefully, uh, you know, it wasn't this bad a few years before COVID. I think COVID really uh, put a spin on our services to the homeless population, to many people who are marginalized. They, they, they're the ones who bore the brunt of this pandemic. And as we get out more and more, we're going to get a better handle on this. I think the, the county task force is finally up and running before they were getting more organized, I believe. Now they've got someone uh, actually in charge, if I'm not mistaken. The county finally hired someone. Uh, by June. <clears throat> by June. Oh, so that's still not. Okay. Are you talking about the community foundation or the. Yeah. The county? Uh, well, it was the county task force. It was more than just the county it was several entities in that and I thought they were hiring I heard from uh, Rashad Cobb at the community foundation the community foundation right yeah, yeah and they've so they, hired they will be hiring and oh, they still to have, implement okay. the blueprint in June oh, it's taking them a long time the county, okay, anyway the county does have a housing navigator Having, working on yep. specifically on a population that's dealing with um, homelessness of course but then also AODA issues right and um, and mental health Yep. And, and certainly the more we all coordinate, city, county, uh, nonprofits, even businesses, uh, uh, it's been very difficult on many businesses this past year uh, in the downtown area. Uh, and the business owners have come together. I, I, I appreciate Jeff Smirk's uh, work on this uh, to see how they can be a positive force in this. Uh, and it takes all of us working together to make a difference. So uh, I would just ask that we be cautious that we don't mix the homeless problems, which are going to be there, with one program, you know, that, that the program is somehow the program is carrying that on its shoulders. It, it, I, I think that's a misconception. I think it's a, careful. We must be careful not to uh, be misguided in that fashion that, that the program is the problem. It's homelessness that's a problem, and will be a problem 
matter how many programs we have until we can finally get people reconnected to services and uh, I, I think really the, the mental health issues and the drug issues are really the, the, the biggest problem of course always have been but it seems like this past year talking to many businesses it has been uh, these people uh, it has been much more aggressive people have been much more aggressive in their antisocial behavior uh, and I think that is something that is going to be a problem for the police to address uh, but something that is going to have to be addressed by the police because no one else can do it uh, until we get more services to change behavior that's the only topical uh, solution we have for it now so I think we just got to be a little patient and keep working all the pro all the solutions we possibly can thank you thanks Alder. all right we have a motion um, to receive and place on file second all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Good. The ayes have it. On to the personnel committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. Any items here to be handled separately? None. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Public arts. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Items here to be handled separately. I have one question. Alder Campbell. I'd like to pull or talk about one item on number uh, three. Three. Under public arts? Yes, yep. on the B1 location. I just feel. Uh, okay. So that will be handled separately. All in favor of the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item three. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. The item was pulled by Alder Campbell. You have the floor. This is in my district here, and uh, I'm not a big artist person. Um, I think we got a lot of great buildings painted around town, and this is a sculpture type thing. But I really think there has to be a limit on some of this. And since this is such a natural area, and there's enough to look at with just the geese cross crossing the road and uh, all the kids coming to play, I don't think we need to add anything more there to attract the Sanctuary Bay Beach. I think we need to see need some, uh, some other location possibly for this North Irwin uh, East Shore Drive thing. Uh, I think we try, let's try to, I mean, we're putting a, a beach in there in the future, I guess. Um, I've heard that as a citizen. Um, you know, the water's cleaning up, more people are going to be using it. Uh, not, not that I'm totally against the, the whole art thing or anything like that. I don't want it, people to get the wrong impression, but there's just some things that you'd like to keep natural. And I mean, that's just uh, my opinion. I'd like to see that move to a different location. It's just one location out of there. I don't think it's a big issue, but I think we just need to keep some stuff natural and uh, uh, you can slide that all in with the no mo may or however you want to place it uh, I think we just need to find a different location for that one B1 location on Irwin and East Shore Drive. Okay thank you Alder. In response uh, Deputy Director Rainier Wig. Yes, Alder, that is actually part of the Rotating Arts Program. So that's a, a slab that's there, an established site. We won't be able to move that site because they're all filled with other art pieces. So oh. it would almost be like you'd have to make like a recommendation to remove that site completely and maybe replace it in another place. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything in response? Then I would to ask that, that we use the appropriate measures to I'll put in uh, whatever I got to put in here to uh, excuse me communication a communication to uh, find a different location for for that for that slab for that slab okay if you want to hold on to that until the end of the meeting and then put in the communication to that effect okay that'd be the appropriate time probably you don't have to do it at the end of the meeting you can do it after the meeting yes that's right so having those comments been made any others uh, Alder Galvin uh, since there's a discussion about moving the slab, um, Director Wig, 
Who paid for that slab to be put in where it is currently? I believe that was funding through the Public Arts Commission. Who, who funded it? <clears throat> that might have been a while ago. It might have been that stadium tax money that was originally used. Do you have an idea about how much that cost? I think those slabs are about 1000 bucks when we put those in. So if we originally. were to move it somewhere else, we'd have to find, I guess, city land, spend about 1000 bucks. Well, maybe it was 1000 bucks in those days. but Maybe a little higher. I I'm seeing, I'm seeing says a buck and a quarter more. Public Works Director saying a little higher. All right, so... To move this, we're potentially looking at $1,000 at least to move it. All right, thank you. That's all there. Any other comments? Uh, what, I'm sorry. Yeah, how, how long is how long have we had art there, uh, Director Wade? I think this will be the second piece we've had there. So they sit for like a year? Or? They sit for a year. Every year we replace them, we rotate them out. So we've had art there for about two years? I think this is the second piece that's been placed Oh, second. There, so okay, so we've had it there for a year. All right, thank you very much. Third piece? I'm sorry, third piece. Okay, two years then. All right, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments on this? That's right, there was that right there. All right, there's been a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That item has been approved. TB and P. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Scannell. That's to approve the report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Report of the Economic Development Authority. Motion to approve. Yep. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by <coughs> Alder Stoyer. Items to be handled separately. Alder Morgan, I think you have one. I wish to uh, address number one. Item one. Okay. Any others? Alder Johnson. May Mayor, I just need to be recorded as abstaining on item two. Very well. So item one will be handled separately. All in favor of the remainder of that report signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it with the exception of item one. Alder Morgan. Uh, I was just recently appointed to this committee and we were had to cancel last night so we really haven't had a lot of discussion. But I have had discussion with the uh, director of the uh, community economic development and he's addressed to me there's still a lot of issues to be addressed he brought that to our attention on a few items earlier so I'd like to make a motion that we would just withhold on this until the May 17th meeting okay so the motion is to hold item t1 until our what was the meeting again I'm sorry May 17th May 17th is there a second for that second. seconded by Alder Weary any additional discussion Alder Campbell? Uh, I don't know if I missed the, the vote here. Uh, not the vote, but uh, item two in that. Uh, on T1? We're on, we're on T1 right now. Oh, I apologize. Okay. That's right. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it, and that's been held over to our May 17 meeting. Report of the St Sustainability Commission. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Items here to be handled separately. Two. Any others? Hearing no others, all in favor of the remainder of that report signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. That was seconded by Alder Galvin. The item was pulled by, I think it was Alder Grant. Yeah. You have the floor. Um, I guess I'm just concerned about this being an ordinance versus an educate and encourage like no Mome. Um, you know, we know crime is on the rise, and one way people protect their home is with lighting. And I, I don't, I'm kind of concerned about forcing people on how they choose to light their house, not to mention the streets of the city and I know it's angles of the lighting, but it really is reducing. When I was looking at Appleton's ordinance, it's reducing the area that it's allowing the light to span. So that will reduce some lighting. Um, so I'm, I guess I don't, I just, I'm more, I don't know if I need to motion to receive and place on file. I don't, it's not that I'm against the idea. I just, the ordinance portion of it. So I don't know if we amend that out or what. It's, it's that word specifically that I don't love. Okay, we'll go to Director Grenier just to explain um, 
what's going on here? Director Grenier? Certainly. Um, appreciate the comments. What I would suggest, this isn't actually drafting the ordinance. What it's doing is directing staff to start working on uh, language that will eventually constitute the ordinance. So what I would encourage you to do is work actively with uh, members of the Sustainability Commission to incorporate the ideas that you have so we make sure we're, uh, that sustainability is accurately reflecting that and bringing those ideas into the ordinance that's ultimately drafted. Okay. Nothing, the, the work hasn't been done yet. What this does is directs the staff to complete that work that could ultimately uh, end up as an ordinance. So you're hitting it right at the, the point that you should. You're, you're on the front end of the, the development of the ordinance. So by all means, reach out to staff uh, so that they can incorporate the ideas that you have. Okay, I just, I, the reason I brought it up as early as I did is because I didn't want staff time being used if it was something that, again, as an ordinance wasn't supported as a council. Thanks, Alder. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to make a motion in particular, or can I have more discussion? I guess because yeah. I again I don't know if I more amend or yeah just the wording I guess so I would right. yeah okay sounds good yeah Alder Eck is in the queue I don't I don't see you on my screen but what? we'll we'll go to you next Alder Eck. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alder, oh. I, I'm oh. on the sustainable more than willing to talk with you and visit on that you know I, I know there at first blush my thought was wow this is really out there but with it being said I mean we deal you know as you f will find out you'll deal with light you'll deal with noise you'll deal with a lot of different issues that we co that come forward to our council this is just looking at you know, it'll be looking at uh, migration patterns of animals as well, birds, bees, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people might think, no, oh, whatever. So I'm, I'm interested to find out more myself. So I'm on the commission. I'm going to be studying it quite thoroughly. And I would, I would invite others on council to do that as well. So I'll be happy to talk with you on that. Thanks, Thank Alder, Alder Eck and then Alder Scannell. Okay, yeah, I, I, I'm against the whole thing. Um, and I know that sounds like, whoa, that's quite the statement, but um, yeah, I, I don't want to tell people how to put in lighting, what kind of lighting, um, any type of thing like that. Um, it's, to me, that's government control, and I'm against it. So I'm against the ordinance altogether, um, and I, I do want to back it up with some more information. Um, while out knocking on doors, um, campaigning, um, in fact, I'm, I was planning to, I've gotten a lot of requests for more light. Um, some street lights, uh, there's places where it's dark, people feel unsafe. So whenever, I, I personally, my house was burglarized. And unless anybody's been burglarized, they don't really know how violated you feel after that. Um, and when, you know, the police came and fingerprints, you know, all this stuff, um, suggestions, more light. Um, so our house is lit up like the 4th of July since then. Um, we have lighting everywhere. You walk in our yard, you're going to have a light on you. Um, so I'm completely against that. And also, I'm also the president of my neighborhood association, and so I have a lot of interactions with the police, the community police in our neighborhood, and ask for advice. And, um, and so when having our meetings, the advice is more lights less bushes in front of windows, things like that. Um, so I guess it just goes against this ordinance completely and based on what the police have told me and personal experience. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell? Um, I would recommend that we, we get the ordinance and we can always amend the ordinance or vote it down once we see what it is. I think you know the police will be part of this process. And I, we'll be taking everybody's concern, the community's concern. So uh, I would like to see what we can come up with first working behind, see what we get. And then once we pull it together here, we get to still kick it around. And then if we still don't like it then, then you know, vote it down. Uh, I just wanted to um, mention that uh, I'd like staff to take a close look at the northwest end of the city, uh, Emma Street there, where the rail yard is. They've done some things with lighting that is it's practically daylight, midnight there. It's, uh, I don't know what we can do there, but if we could uh, 
include focus on that as well for for this i'd appreciate it thank you okay. thanks alder any additional comments I, alder brunette yeah um you know thank you i i obviously love nature migratory bird patterns and all that very important um but this does seem rather heavy-handed and so an ordinance is by force of law whereas a community education program could perhaps create similar outcomes without such a heavy-handed government um, uh, chief davis that's actually a great point about law enforcement back in my early days in council when we had more staff uh, in the police department they would attend neighborhood meetings and they would tell people exactly what alder X said more lighting more security when citizens contact us for street lights it protects the safety of the neighborhood in my opinion is that your professional opinion what do you advise as Green Bay's top cop um, you know I know that traditionally you will hear police officers give the advice to have more light um, what a and how do I put this I think that is good advice. My question, just kind of listening to this discussion, is is there a way to direct the light in such a way that it achieves our safety objectives while also getting at some of these other important objectives that we have? For example, you know, motion sensor lights. That's what I have at my house. Um, or lights that are directed downward in such a way and I really just don't know enough about what kind of lighting technology exists that might be able to balance both of those things of course you're better off having at least at the time that somebody comes to and hopefully this never happens to you but at the time that somebody comes to break into your house a motion sensor light or something that comes on um, I, I would also recommend paired with a camera um, but again, I mean, it, there may be a way to have a little bit of both. And so I, I wouldn't want to say, as your public safety advisor, don't do any of this because it might be possible to have a little bit of both. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, this is a good discussion for the Sustainability Commission. You know, work through the details. It's 114 pages of multiple municipalities. Hash it out there. We have a, a fine city council member of the 10th district on that on that commission and he could uh, convey the concerns of the council when we refer these sorts of things to staff we're essentially saying our law department you know our city attorneys have a lot on their plate and you know they work hard um, and to put this on their plate before it goes a final walkthrough at the sustainability commission I don't think that that's a prudent use of our resources we can hash that out and all their Eck and Grant and all the others that have concerns, you can appear before that commission, which is basically a, a citizen board that volunteer and work their tails off for the city. It's better to be discussed there before sending it to the professionals at City Hall to draft an ordinance that may not get approved in the end. So thank you. So I'll make a motion to refer back to the Sustainability Commission. Second. The motion has been made to refer this item back to Sustainability Commission. Just to quickly echo what, what Chief referenced, I mean, the, the idea here is to send less light into the air, not light down to the ground, which is the, you know, what creates safety in neighborhoods and on private property. The other thing, and I'd go to Director Grenier on this to enlighten us a little bit, no pun intended, Alder Scannell, but um, I, based on my discussions with uh, Ms. Schmidt, she had said, I think the Sustainability Commission was really interested in starting with the city itself, not necessarily putting any requirements on private individuals. So just wanted to state that and then get your response, Director Grenier. That's correct. The intent is to start with city facilities first and then make recommendations for private property. Again, as you alluded to, Mayor, the intent of a dark skies policy is to direct the light where it's needed, which is down, uh, not to necessarily reduce the amount of light that's being broadcast down. So, for instance, uh, for the past 20 years or so, the fixtures that have been used for city street lighting, you no longer see the traditional cobra head design. So that's kind of a teardrop design, uh, the classic street light I remember of my youth, or the basket style fixture, which was a round fixture with a, with a plastic rim around the bottom. Uh, but instead you see the fixtures we see now, which are referred to as cutoff fixtures. 
And there is photometrics that go into that. Uh, my traffic engineer spends ungodly amounts of time uh, calculating photometrics on city streets when we get uh, requests in for streetlight studies. And what he's doing is he's trying to balance uh, the distribution of light so we get an even distribution of light, there's not hot spots and cool spots, uh, and that we're getting the proper road uh, level of lighting for, for safety and roadways. Um, and what that involves is the fixture specifically designed not to emit light up and waste that light, but rather direct it down to the street level where it belongs from the mounting height. So there are fixtures that are commercially available. There are fixtures that are available for home usage as well that will accomplish the same things and direct that light down into the yard or at ground level where it's intended as opposed to shooting the light up into space, which is a waste. Uh, that Unless the light reflects off of something, it's energy that goes nowhere, the same as heat emitting through your house if you don't have proper insulation. Uh, so if you think of it on those terms, what we're, what we're hoping to accomplish with this policy or this ordinance is to direct the light where it's needed. And again, yes, you're correct, the intent is to start with city facilities like we have started with the street lighting. Okay. Thanks, Director. Uh, Alder. Alder Hutchison. Yes, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to follow up uh, uh, with what the director just said. Um, I live on the east side in District 2, and behind the East Town Mall, you may have recalled there's a lot of cars being sold, and the light that is emitted upwards in that uh, 5, 10 acre area pretty much wipes out any nighttime view for the whole neighborhood to the east. Um, I put my outside lights on every night because of the safety issue. That's different than those lights. Those lights are huge and they're on every night, all night. So I think putting a cap on those and shining that light down would be good. It would be good for my neighborhood. Uh, if we're talking about starting with the city, uh, that's great. And then I would say, uh, let's go uh, to the to those who sell automobiles second. <laughs> that's just my view of it. And I think it's more about using our energy, focusing it down where it's needed, not less light where humans are, but less light up in the air. I think that's what the goal of the this is, and I, I would support that work. Great. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson and then Alder Galvin. Thank you, Mayor. I support the referral as, as well. I want to make sure that we're not sort of just knee-jerk reacting to something, which admittedly I did too when I first read it. And then I went and watched the Sustainability Commission meeting, and you can you can glean some, some valuable tidbits from this. And there are a lot of things that we can achieve through a policy like this that aren't government regulation or imposition. So I, I, I am still very standoffish about an ordinance that tells homeowners what they can do. Um, but much like uh, the city declared that we're gonna you know, be free of certain fuels by 2050, this could be something very similar. And so if we're, we're refocusing that energy, focusing on the, the, the fixtures that we control, we can reduce electricity consumption. We can achieve the dark sky objectives. <laughs> Um, you know, some of the things that were talked about are bird migration patterns, insect patterns. Is that, the, you know, is that a thing? I don't know, but I'd like more information I, because I don't know what I don't know. So I, I think that there are some things that we can learn in this process, but if we vote it down, it, meaning that we don't refer, we never have an opportunity to learn about those things. We just kind of kill it right now and say, don't do any more work that could ultimately benefit the city. Uh, but I think even though uh, uh, I think to Alder Burnett's point, we received a lot of documentation on this. Um, I think that there's probably a way that the commission, through the use of volunteers, can really kind of filter that down and highlight maybe some of the more important pieces, baby steps perhaps. Let's, let's you know, talk about city-related light fixtures first. Maybe it's the type of fixture, you know, even thinking about things like um, how do we, you know, how do we pick the right fixture but preserve historical integrity of light fixtures in historic neighborhoods, right? So there's there's a lot to contemplate there. But if we if we vote it down now, it never goes anywhere, and we never have an opportunity to to let the commission do the work that they're trying to do. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I too have been uh, the victim of a burglary, and uh, it is a very unsettling experience uh, to know that people were literally five feet away from your bedroom uh, as you slept. Um, my house that I'm in currently is, is motionless, so like the chief said, uh, one thing it alerts me if someone's snoking around because the lights go on, it tells you someone's out there. Um, and I did back it up with some security cameras also. Uh, but I get a lot of complaints from neighbors about other neighbors, yard lights, spotlights, shining in their windows, keeping them awake at night. I've had neighbors complain about street lights that some people want to light up the street because it's shining in their windows. A lot of complaints about the development at Bellevue and Mason and all the lights shining in the neighbors' windows that at one time were dark and they could go to sleep at night. Um, so, and the city does currently have ordinances controlling lights on businesses and, and other entities um, as to how bright they are and things like that. So, I mean, we already do have some restrictions um, in our ordinances, but I, I think, um, like uh, Alder uh, Johnson was saying, uh, Alder Burnett, let's take a look and see what we can find out. Let's learn before we start shutting things down completely. And then from there, we can massage it to fit our needs or our wants or what our constituents uh, are asking for. And if so, yeah, we don't have an ordinance or, or maybe we do, but I think uh, seeing what the city can do initially is a good way to learn as we go. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Eck and then Alder Morgan. Okay, yeah, I, I just wanted to reiterate that my, my biggest concern, I, I think education is good. Um, starting with city lights, but it, it was a lot of documentation and I, I read through it. And it was a lot of limitations on the angles of the light fixtures and all that, and even businesses, I wouldn't want to, um, that's a lot to replace all of those light fixtures. That would be very expensive. So that is my concern. Okay, thanks Alder. Alder Morgan? I guess I'd like to uh, bring an attention that when I was knocking on doors to run for this office. Uh, I live behind East Elm Mall. I built my house there 38 years ago. My backyard and all my windows in the back of my house are 300 feet from East uh, the Ganridge Chevrolet lights. They don't bother me and I've never had a neighbor complain about it. What I do have complaints constantly is about car groups and that that convene at East Town Mall, sometimes behind uh, where the Shopco store was and that. And I've had discussions with Mr. Bader. I've had discussions with the people that are working on uh, Ganrud's proposal behind my house. And from what I'm hearing from, they're going to try to do more lighting. And that's what I think is going to help in that area. Uh, behind me, the proposal is to build a great big warehouse that's going to be fully lit. It's probably going to block my view of the the car lots and stuff but to me that you know 39 years as a policeman myself I know that if that's lit up properly that's going to scare a few people away and uh, like I say I have the only trouble I have where I live if because of the lights of the car lots I can't see the fireworks at Lambeau Field you know but <laughs> I can drive over to the west side if I want to see that and in closing, I, I do believe that we have enough laws to tell people what to do, and I'm, I'm glad to hear the city's going to try it out and see how it works, and at that time we can make our decisions. I'm all for that. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell, and then Alder Stoyer. Just wanted to get clarification. So we're sending this, the motion is to send it back with uh, telling the commission that we'd like them to narrow the focus and perhaps even come up with steps. That's what we're, that's, okay. Just wanted to make sure, clarify. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alder, Alder Storer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> I'd say a couple months ago, you know, it's the Sustainability Commission, there, there are quite a few commissions in this city, and a lot of times, you know, we, as Alders, we were, we're invited, we can go to these meetings. And I went to a couple meetings on my own and I think it was more or less for the green infrastructure. I was really interested to find out what, what's going on with that. And the fact that I was there, I asked a lot of questions. Uh, Alder Dorf was there as well. But there were just a couple of us. And all I'm saying, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty, but what I'm saying is that we would really like your input. We'd like you there. And uh, you represent 9,000 citizens. I think it's really important that you take that time. It's only once a month. 
And I went to two meetings ahead of time, and, and it, it was a kind of a nice segue for me to just go right under that committee because I had shown some interest. So there will be more and more of these issues coming up with sustainability coming on in the future. And, you know, I know a lot of people think, oh, it's a, some kind of crazy leftist this or that. But you know what? I think let's take a look at just the issue itself. You know, I think there's a lot of good things here that we can all benefit from, and it doesn't have to have partisanship uh, at all on it. So those are my points. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Grant? Um, I just want to reiterate, and I do plan to show up to the Sustainability Committee. Again, it was more just the ordinance that worried me, and I understand everybody's side, but it was also not that long ago that a whole bunch of tires were stolen off of cars at Dorschford on the east side, all lit up. So. I'm just saying we all see issues and I am all for educating, encouraging, coming up with a plan. It was just more the ordinance side that really rubbed me the wrong way. So that's all. Got it. Thanks, Alder. All right, a lot of good comments. Seeing nobody else in the queue, all in favor of that motion to refer back to the Sustainability Commission, which was made by Alder Burnett and seconded by Alder Johnson, will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay? <laughs> the ayes have it. And we are on to resolutions. The rules. Second. Motion to suspend the rules and take up these resolutions with one roll call vote. That was made by Alder Scannell and seconded by Alder Johnson. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt these resolutions made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any discussion there? Seeing none, we will use the board. Unanimously. Under ordinances, first reading. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion to suspend the rules. Take up these items with one roll call vote made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to advance. Second. Motion to advance these ordinances to a second final reading made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. Any comments? None. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Petitions and communications. Uh, Alder Burnett. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I have two. I believe this is improvement in service because it relates to perhaps some contracts the city has with organizations that dispose of waste. Correct me if I'm wrong, Director Grenier, but it's uh, for discussion with possible action on finding solutions to lessen trash along Highway 54 from Packerland to the city limits. So I think that's a no, no comment means that's probably a good thing. Uh, You're talking about litter? Litter, yeah, like the trucks that take uh, equipment or uh, trash to the landfill. Oh, okay. So covering them, that it's a sustainability thing, actually. But I prefer to go to INS. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, this uh, second one goes to finance. Uh, for a status update and discussion regarding legal services received from Law Forward, States United Democracy Center, and Stafford Rosenbaum LLP with possible actions such as continuing or discontinuing legal services received. Thanks, Alder. Any other? Alder Story? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alder Burnett reminded me of something here, so I and I could talk to Director Grenier about it. <coughs> Excuse me again, a little head cold. Um, but I'd like to have um, a communication put into the effect on the waste sites, the grass clipping sites. You know, a lot of times I'll go there. I don't see uh, a lot of folks monitoring to see if these contractors from are in town or not. You know, I'd like to study that issue. So I don't know how to word it completely, but that would be more or less to look at better ways at the waste sites to monitor city residents as well as maybe fees, if possible. That's a lot of work. Why don't you word it for me? <laughs> at the waste recycling facilities. Yes, do it for me. Compliance. Thank you, Steve. You're the man. Okay. <laughs> Any others? My, he my, my head's so right now. I can't even breathe. Motion to refer. 
Second. Second. Motion has been made to refer these petition these communications to the proper authority made by Alder Brunette, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. They're referred. Adjournment. Motion to adjourn made by Alder Act, seconded by Alder Star. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 A